Back here in Minneapolis, we take a look at the athletics release of their top 25 polls and look at the Big Ten teams that are already ranked. You got five of them right now in the top 21. And then next year, USC and UCLA will join. This league is so good right now and is only getting better, it feels, year after year. We're glad to bring in the man who is in charge of this conference, the commissioner of the Big Ten, Tony Petiti, about six months or so into the gig. So this will be your first basketball season uh, as the Big Ten commissioner. I, I mentioned the Big Ten. It's riding this incredible wave where you look at attendance, mm -hmm. TV ratings, you know, results on the court. Everything is pointing up. What has to happen to keep the league up here, if not continuing well, to rise? First, great to be with you this morning. Appreciate it. Uh, I think the momentum from last year is just absolutely tremendous. So I think when that happens, what you see is uh, a combination of things. It kind of inspires creativity, stage events. So what's going to happen in Iowa, hopefully weather permitting this weekend. Right. Um, and then the reaction from media partners about doing more around the women's game. Right, so you get we're getting more exposure, our championship game on CBS. So those things all happen naturally because people gravitate towards success, and we had tremendous success last year. So you're seeing the results of that, and that's the best way to, to keep the momentum going. Speaking of success, um, you've been around sports for a long time. You've been around television for a long time. How do you put into perspective the phenomenon that is Caitlin Clark in these Iowa Hawkeyes? Yeah, you, you learn from doing this for a long period of time that you can't manufacture that. Right, it's got to be organic. It's got to be just absolutely natural, and that's what it is. I mean, the fact that it's the combination of the performance, the personality, the stages, all of those things have to come together, and it doesn't happen that often. And when it does, you know, people gravitate. It starts to just keep going, and but it's all built around the performance and the skill and our teammates and the quality of the opponents. It's all connected, right? And I think that's the big part about this. And the great news is that. It's not just you know Iowa that benefits. It's the conference. It's women's basketball in general. It inspires more young kids to play. Like it's just it's just a complete cascading of, of you know positive energy that that this has brought, which is great. And isn't it wild? I mean, you have a, a great baseball background. When you see a Shohei Otani, you're like, we've never seen that before. Right. When you see a Caitlin Clark do stuff, you're like. There's no precedent for right. what she's doing. Yeah, that's the great thing about live sports in general, right? Like you just go, it's not scripted. You come to it. You don't know what to expect always. There's always, you know, somebody great on the way. Someone is going to raise the bar. And that's just what just happened in the women's game. And, you know, it's just tremendous. And, I, and I'm really excited about, you know, the growth that we're going to see this season as a result of that. She and her teammates made it to the national championship game last year. What does that do for the conference going forward? Yeah, I mean, I, look, we expect to play for national championships in all our sports, 100% across. That's what our coaches are here to do, what our student athletes are here to do. And I think, you know, we talk about this a lot. When student athletes come to the Big Ten women's basketball, they expect to compete against the best, play against the best. And, you know, getting to that level, uh, you know, just kind of reinforces all that. It's, it, it resets the goal for everybody. We know we can do it. Uh, we've had, you know, really strong programs across. You saw the depth in the top uh, 25 or so, so I feel really good about that. There are new television partnerships mm -hmm. this year, more ways to watch Big Ten women's basketball than there ever have been before. What does that do for the league? Look, exposure is everything, right? So it, it tells you when media companies who have lots of choices about what they want to put on, how they want to program, what they want to schedule, when they gravitate to something, it tells you they believe in it and they expect it to do well. So we're going to see that this year. The exposure is going up, the stages are getting bigger, the reach is in, improving, and it just it kind of all goes together and how it, it strengthens. So that having that additional media reach is going to be critical to the growth. And as a conference, you know, we, we couldn't be positioned better. You mentioned earlier the fact that there's an outdoor basketball game mm -hmm. coming up this Sunday on the Big Ten Network where Iowa is taking on DePaul. They've already sold about 50,000 mm -hmm. tickets yeah. to that event. What is that like from your perspective? Uh, it just shows, I just admire the creativity in doing that. You know, uh, Beth Getz and the team at Iowa, and Coach Bluter, all of it, just like to be able to stage that and put that together, uh, you know, optimistic that the weather will cooperate and it'll happen the way it, yeah, can it should. Can you call in some favors, by the yeah, way, to make I, sure I, it's dry? I, you know, I'm used to that, sweating out the weather <laughs> in, my, in my previous role. But I think, uh, you know, just the fact that we have that stage and that creativity, it's just, it's what you do. When something is going really well, it just inspires you to do more and think creatively. Like Nebraska's volleyball was a perfect example of that. So this, to me, is like the next stage in that evolution. And the fact that it's happening on the women's side is really important. 
the focus is on this upcoming year as it should be, but we rarely have historic changes the way we do on the horizon next summer when four West Coast schools will be joining. What are your early thoughts on how women's basketball scheduling will be different once there are 18 teams? Yeah, we're working on all of that behind the scenes. Really, um, it has started to integrate USC and UCLA, and then when we made the decision to, to, to add Oregon, Washington, it kind of restarted that process, and we had to go back to the drawing board to do that. So you take into all those factors, you know, it's the traditional rivalries, it's travel issues, it's competitive balance, it's making sure that the conference is connected. So really the mentality is no different in any sport that we have. It's just those same things permeate every decision, every schedule. Just that, and, and the key thing is that you've got to treat every sport like it's unique. And so women's basketball will have different challenges than other sports that, that, that we have. So I think we're mindful of all of that. Obviously, there's when you do something when you're as big as we are, you know, travel comes to the forefront. Lots of people want to talk about our travel. But you know, I think we're doing a really good job of, of blending that into all of our decisions and trying to, to have the schedules make sense. So it's been, as I mentioned, about six months. My math has 147 days since you officially became mm -hmm. the commissioner. Give me the most enjoyable moment you've had so far. I, I think it was watching uh, Northwestern's women team win the National Lacrosse Championship to be there, to be able to wear some purple and black uh, sneakers and be, on the, you know, and be out there rooting really hard. You know, in the job, obviously, you don't get the root that frequently. And so being there to watch them uh, win the National Championship was spectacular. It was a lot of fun. I was going to ask you next what has been the most challenging aspect, but I feel like off air we were talking about it. You've had 40 trips, you think, already? In yeah, the I think somewhere close to that. <laughs> There's a lot of travel. But look, you know, the best part about the job, it's just whether it was this summer getting the campus to meet, uh, you know, meet student athletes, meet coaches, see the facilities, that part was, was terrific. And then being, you know, out for games, like this, that's the best part of the job. So those trips are just, you, know, you look forward to them and you're trying to, you're playing them. And, um, and it's not just football, it's all of our sports. Commissioner Tony Petiti. Great having you thank on board. Thank you so Thanks much. Appreciate it. Time. Yeah, thank you. Preseason rankings for this upcoming Big Ten season, according to the coaches and the media. The Iowa Hawkeyes, number one in both. Ohio State and Indiana flipped two versus three. Everyone agrees Maryland is in the top four. And then interesting at number five, either Illinois or Michigan. That just released not long ago. Again, the coaches and media polls. Back here in Minneapolis, minutes away from checking in with the players and the coaches, and we are happy to welcome in our newest member of the team, who is actually both a former player and a former coach, played at Michigan, was an assistant at Nebraska and Minnesota, is Shimmy Gray Miller. Great to have you with us. Great to be here. Thank you, Mike. The bar is high. I'm just saying, we need you to meet these expectations, Shimmy. Otherwise, you know, they'll tell you, we're going to attack you. Otherwise, I'll just get kicked right <laughs> that's, off the that's, side. Oh, that's the warm yeah, welcome that. that I like to bring for you. Uh, let's go down the line. I want to know your opinions on who you think are the top three teams. We just saw what the coaches and the media said. Christy, what are your one, two, three right now? Well, you have to go with Iowa first, but then Ohio State, for me, is in that second spot, and then I'm going to go with Indiana in that third spot. They return most of their starters, four of them to be exact, but I love what Iowa looks like mentally, and I love the confidence that they're going to bring back to the court this year, but then when you're talking about the staunch defensive effort that Ohio State brought to the table, they're actually ranked higher in a lot of national polls going into the season, and Lisa Bluter said, hey, we don't mind that. A lot of teams in this this league are great. Seven teams went to the NCAA tournament last year, so it is stacked and chock full of talent. What about you, Autumn? Your top three. Yeah, so obviously Iowa is up there, but I'm going to switch mine up a little bit. I have Ohio State, also Indiana, and I want to throw in a sleeper pick in Illinois. This is a team that came in and knocked off Iowa last season during the regular season. They almost knocked off Indiana and Ohio State. The Shauna Green effect. Man, yeah. let me tell you, she is – really changing this program. They went to seven wins to now 22 in this last season. She brought in a plethora of transfers and Makaira Cook and also Genesis Bryant, who were able to 
provide a lot of scoring for this team. Kendall Bostic is special down low, cleans the glass very well. And then you also add Camille Hobby, who is an NC State transfer. She's going to help Kendall down low. So I'm really excited to see how this team shakes out this upcoming season. Um, so that's going to be my sleeper pick. Obviously, Iowa's going to be up there. But Ohio State, they're actually my favorite in this conference for sure. What they lost in Taylor Mike Sell is crucial. But what they bring in with Celeste Taylor, that is going to be special for this team. She was the ACC um, DPOY of that conference. She's going to come in for that press and cause havoc and suffocate. I can't wait to see it. Yeah, Jimmy? Okay, so first of all, I hope that there's uh, like Hawkeye proof glass up here because <laughs> I don't have Iowa in my top three. There you go. All right. <laughs> Barely have them in my top five. Okay. Barely in your top five? Because that's just how good this league is. Yeah. That's just how it's not a you know a detriment to Iowa. It's a testament to the league. But my top three in order, I've got Indiana, the defending regular season Big Ten champs. I've got Ohio State, the team that Autumn loves so much. And then as my number three team, I have Maryland because all Brenda Freeze does is win. Like it doesn't matter who transfers out, who transfers in, undersized, what defense they play. She's a winner. So I've, I've got them in my uh, running in my top three. What's interesting, I think, about you not having Iowa in there is they could be a team that might finish fourth in the Big Ten and still run to the Final Four. Yeah. Like, especially with yes. a weapon like Caitlin Clark who can explode like that. That wouldn't stun me if they were a really good team and happened to not be in title contention but be great come March. Well, it's once again, it's just a testament to how good this league is. And also, you, I mean, you've got great coaches from top to bottom in this league. I, I, I think that this league... I find it hard to believe that there's another league out there with the experience of the coaching that that the Big Ten has. But you've got Lisa Bluter and Jan Jensen, two of the longest tenured, you know, the dynamic duo of coaches, in my opinion. So they're going to find a way. They're going to find a way to figure out how we're going to replace 40 percent of the scoring that they lost. I, I think also worth noting um, I think Michigan is going to take somebody down mm -hmm. this year. I mentioned at the top too, Chrissy. I think Nebraska. Yeah. They have the they have a high ceiling of talented oh, yeah. players, and if if somebody sleeps on them, they're, they're going to get at least somebody. Don't oh, you think? Oh, no doubt about it. I mean, Jazz Shelley is her. Okay, when we're talking about <laughs> skill set and confidence, she brings it every single night. And Alexis Markowski, don't forget about her. She's not just going to pound you in the paint. She's not just going to be a staunch rebounder, but she's going to knock in threes and stretch the floor as well. And when we were talking with Amy Williams earlier today, she said, listen, she has really worked on her confidence. She has really worked on trying to be more efficient and effective in terms of her scoring ability and percentage in the paint. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to send the three of you out to keep talking with coaches and players. Come back at the end of the show. Give us your insight, what your main takeaway has been. Well, it's time to start things off with our coaches and players, and why not start with the Michigan Wolverines, picked to be one of the top five teams in the league this year. Layla Felia, just a star last year. She's a preseason All-Big Ten selection this year. They've been in the NCAA tournament multiple years in a row. They are riding a high wave, and we're glad to bring to the desk right now Layla Felia, Cameron Williams, who started every game last year, and Kim barnes Rico entering her 12th season in charge of the program here at Michigan. And I, I mentioned this earlier. Earlier, the program in almost every level is consistently winning 20 games or more every year an NCAA tournament every year how come what is working now I love your enthusiasm <laughs> <laughs> you're putting a smile on my face and I love the way you talk about our program um, I think we've been just very fortunate to get incredible incredible young women to decide to come to the University of Michigan um, I have really special players inside of our program and I think that is the Michigan difference um, the power of that block M is real and they, they the players in our program believe in excellence and they want to compete in the classroom they want to compete on the court and I'm surrounded here today by by Layla and Cameron and two great examples of those type of young women all right what does she do well you start, Leo. She really builds confidence in each and every one of the players, and I feel like that's something that has stuck out to me throughout my years here. She really builds into us as women on and off the court. I think she really prides herself on being, bringing the energy and building us as women. I think it's super important for her to tell us that you know we have a powerful women's club, and I think it's super important that we're carrying ourselves in the best way possible on and off the court. What don't we see about her? You guys are with this head coach every single day. What don't we know about her? 
She's intense. I think we know that. She's very I think we're intense aware of that. and fiery. Brings the energy each and every day, as Kim was saying. Yeah, she's very fiery. She brings the energy every day. Um, cracks some jokes every now and then, too. <laughs> You agree with that assessment? <laughs> I'm watching myself scream on, <laughs> right. the, on the TV. Um, that's scaring me a little bit. Uh, well, I loved your enthusiasm, and we always talk about how... So I could play for you. It, yes, yes, how enthusiasm is contagious. And um, that, that's one of the things as a coach that excites me the most. You know, we, we talk about Layla all the time, and just her intensity and her want and her desire to play defense. I mean, what great player wants to play defense? Yeah. Layla Filia. Right. When you have one of your best players in your program that says, coach, put me, put me against the other team's best player. Like, I want to lock her up. That's her focus. I'm, that, like, gets me excited. You know, when you, when you have someone that says, coach, how many rebounds, Cameron Williams, how many rebounds can I get today? Like, I, I want to I get more rebounds than not as had. I want to do this better than the person that came before me. I think, you know, that intensity and that fire is contagious. And and I feed off of them and, and our program, like we pride ourselves on that intensity and that work ethic. And we think that that is our separator. So these are two players that you've had in the program, but you're also bringing in a bunch, three transfers who all averaged 12 points or more last year. What was your philosophy in the transfer portal this year? Yeah, I, I think we um, we traditionally haven't had transfers in our program. Last year we had two fifth-year players, but they were two fifth-year players that were in our program and Emily Kaiser and Leah Brown. So I, I think, you know, at Michigan, it's not an easy place to transfer to. We don't really um, live and die in the transfer portal like a lot of other programs. Um, we really pride ourselves on the academic piece. So the first and most important thing was that we got three student athletes that really cared about excelling in the classroom. And the three transfers that we, we um, have in our program want to be great. We want to be great in the classroom. But they are also dynamic on the court. And for us, we knew we were graduating some large pieces and we were going to have to fill those roles with some players that had experience. Um, Lauren Hansen is a kid that has had a tremendous, tremendous amount of experience. She's with us today, smiling over there. We call her New York, you know, because she brings a little bit of intensity from New York. Um, Not that you can relate to that. No, but, uh, but she is one of those examples, as is um, Alyssa Brett and Taylor Williams. They're three players that come with a tremendous amount of experience. They've scored the basketball, but they've also done other things to help their teams be really successful so we're excited about adding them to our mix for sure let me ask the two of you how do you see your roles changing this year because as coach was saying there's some big names that left the program how will yes. your role be different this year being a leader on the court that's something that coach and I have talked about a lot and just understanding that there's not a lot of experience right now so filling those gaps is going to be like my main focus and making sure that the transfers along with the freshmen, everyone's comfortable. What about you, Cam? Just to touch on that, I think leadership has been a huge thing for us that we've been honing in on lately. Um, we've lost a lot of great leaders in the past, and I think it's going to be super important to fill those shoes. Um, and also from a rebounding perspective, we've lost a lot of great rebounding people like Emily Kaiser, Nas Hillman. And I think that's one of our focuses recently, just to become better at rebounding. Double, double. Not Cameron. bad. Double, double. Oh, that's the expectation. <laughs> yeah, double, double, double. That's easy to do. In this league? <laughs> oh, yeah. That'll be fun. In this league. <laughs> yeah, fine. piece of cake. No real tough opponents here. Cameron's ready for it. She's been waiting for it. <laughs> I'm ready. Uh, last year's defense was incredible. Second best in the league. What made the defense so good last year? I think the intensity. I think we come to practice every I'm day. I'm noticing a theme, ladies. <laughs> yeah. No, literally, every day at practice, we pride ourselves on being great defenders. We work day in and day out, day out on being great defenders. And I think that really translates over to the games. So, yeah, I think just bringing that intensity and that fire and really watching like film and knowing the people that we play against and really locking in on their personnel. What about you, Layla? I feel like the biggest thing is just the chemistry also. And being able to just have that chemistry on defense and working out with each other, I feel like I found that very helpful. Just bringing everyone together, working out individually, and just locking in on defense and like everyone's strengths. Yeah. Uh, incoming freshman Miss Basketball in the state of Michigan, Macy Brown. What are your early thoughts on her? 
Macy's awesome. She's great. I'm yeah. sure she these guys are all smiling over she, there. She is great. She um she's just has an infectious personality as well. And um she's just a, a bright light. I yes. would say she's a bright spot. She's ultra positive and as a freshman or anyone that's new in our program you know you have you have a lot thrown at you very quickly and the demands and the expectations are incredibly incredibly high and Macy's like bring it like she embraces it she welcomes it um, she uses these guys as a sounding board all the time she's following Layla's lead she wants to be you know she wants to work out with her she wants to learn from her she wants to pick her brain I mean what what greater thing for a young kid to do than to surround yourself with someone like Layla. So she's just been a sponge and, um, you know, Taylor Woodson is, is our other freshman. The two of them combined are just really bring in um, an, an infectious personality and work ethic to our to our program. I mean, what I love about that is that I'm asking you, and you're so excited about Macy <laughs> that yes. you jump in to say she's so great. When yes. did you realize you had something special in that freshman? I feel like the first time it was practice so during practice and she would always come up to me and the first thing she asked me was how are you so great at defense what yeah. do you do and that stuck out to me and I was like oh my gosh let's let me tell you yeah. <laughs> so just during practice just seeing like how eager she is to learn and the questions that she's asked me is about defense and I told her, like, that's what's going to get you on the floor, your defense, your defensive abilities and knowing the game, the IQ, knowing who you're guarding. And I feel like from then, it's just been amazing helping her on and off the court with defense. Yeah. I love it. Cam, what has you most excited about this year's team? Man, I think we have a lot of great pieces coming in. We've touched on our transfers that we have coming in, our freshmen. And just to touch on the freshmen, I think Macy and both Taylor bring such great assets to our team. Um, Macy, with her energy, it's it's really, like, amazing. Like, And for someone to be a freshman and want to learn so much, I think, makes a world of a difference. And then from our transfers, I think we have a lot of different, like, skills. We have rebounders, um, people who can make decisions, playmakers, and I think that's super important for us. So I think we're going to be a really deep team this year. Should we embarrass Sarah and talk about her? I mean, she's right off there. I mean, we're still keeping her around, huh? Yeah, we're on air. We're talking about you. One of the great members of your staff. Sarah never really gets any love publicly, <laughs> so it's always great to give her a shout out to the world. Um, she Sarah's like big time too. She's kind of moved up oh, in. Yeah. Uh, oh, she does in the Michigan. Text. I mean, she's in very, the Michigan community. Yeah, she's yeah. like a supervisor and all of that. It's gone to her head. Yeah, it it kind of has. But one last thing okay. I, I just want to touch on. We had a player that last year kind of got her feet wet a, a little bit when Layla went down injured, and she's been bringing a great spark to practice as well, and that's Jordan Hobbs. Oh, I yes. mean, yeah, her and, and Layla kind of grew up playing AU together, um, so they kind of like th have this great connection on the floor, and she's worked incredibly hard in the off season. I think she's going to have some, uh, some great minutes for us this year as well. She's going to be big this year. Watch out for Jordan Hobbs. I like it. I like the intensity, which is our theme. For the the energy. Time. Yes. And I'll tell you, it's working. If you look at the history books for Michigan women's basketball, of the four winningest seasons of all time, two of them have come in the last two years. It is a great time to be a Wolverine. Cam, Kim, and Layla, thanks so much for being here. Best of luck this season. Thank, Thank you. you. Go. Rutgers women's basketball here at Media Day in Minneapolis. Posing. Look at that pose. How do we feel about that pose? China, huh? I feel good about that pose. I feel like it right now. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good pose. Yeah. Well, wait till you see how you look right now on camera as we're glad to turn our attention to the Scarlet Knights. Here's a look at their season. Second year for their head coach, Coquise Washington, bringing in some big name transfers, signed some nice freshmen. Again, this was a tough spot for them last year. They're, they're playing a, a, an exhibition <laughs> a little bit against South Carolina. A uh, little bit of talent on that South Carolina team. They're going to honor Nikki McCray Penson, which is great, and we're happy to have with us Kayleen Smichael, who broke the Rutgers freshman scoring record last season, China Cornwell, who averaged almost a double double last season, and Coquise Washington. But I mentioned it, the headline on last year's team was that you guys had a tough task. You had eight scholarship players for the entire season. I want all of you to go down the line. What was that like? What were the, the benefits? Fits, what were the challenges of it? It was a lot of fun for me. Um, I didn't have to worry about like 
who's going in next. It was easy to get our rotation, <laughs> but they made it easy for us to coach because they just really bought into how we wanted to play. They really bought into their roles, and it was a lot of fun trying to just, trying to go out there every night and just compete and be the best we could. Um, I'd say I had a lot of fun. The girls, I mean, they were amazing. The chemistry was great. We bonded so well on and off the court. Um, it's still the same girls really this year, and just honestly, I had a blast. I had a blast last season. I know I'm going to have a blast this season too. Yeah, last year was definitely a year to remember. And Coach, Coach, he made it easier for us, telling us to just go out there and have fun. Like, don't worry about anything else. Was it tiring? I mean, there's a, no. a, a shorter bench. No, it wasn't tiring? No, we, we were, were in great we shape. We were in great shape. Yeah. Well, there you yeah. go. Well conditioned. That's a good answer. Yes. yes. I will say China, like, if you look at your stats, two years ago, you averaged about six minutes a game. And then last year, you got an opportunity, and you almost averaged a double-double. How come? Um, honestly, it took a lot of prayers. Um, I talked to God a lot. And just honestly, God just gave me that confidence. He gave me the faith. I just came out on the court. I gave it everything I got. Coach Cole, she believed in me. And that was just enough itself. Pretty, pretty impressive what an opportunity can do for someone, right? Yeah. You give her minutes and you see what's there. Well, and, and China is somebody that works. You know, she's very consistent, consistent in practice, consistent on game day. You know what, what she's going to do for you. You know what we're going to get from her. And that consistency in her work ethic showed up on, on game day. Yeah. Kayleen, what did you learn from last year? Uh, I learned that... Practicing hard in practice makes it a lot easier to play when it's time for game day. Was that something you struggled <laughs> with early? Is that what I'm gathering? No, yeah, a little. I, Cause coming from high school, it's like we never really went hard in practice. So having to transition, run like every single drill was a, at a hundred. So I think that really helped me make an easy transition to playing. What were you play. most proud of with your own performance last year as a freshman in the Big Ten? Um, I think how much confidence I had in myself. Like I didn't lose it throughout the season. Yeah. Um, what do you think? I want for both of you to answer this. What, start with you, Kaylin. What did you work on the most this off season? My ball handling. Yeah. Yes. How come? So I think it's something I need to improve, and it can help me take my game to another level. I worked on my shot all summer. Um, Coach Cole has his 20,000 shot challenge, and I shot 21,120. Um, I was the most on the team to do it. I worked on my shot all summer, and now I'm really confident in my shot now. Thanks okay. to Coach Cole. Okay, what is yeah. the twenty thousand shots? See, you ain't supposed to. Yeah. Okay. So we we uh, <laughs> outside of whatever we do as a team, we want to work on our shot and and get our fundamentals better. So we had a, a challenge to see if we could make twenty thousand, you know, our twenty thousand shots over the the course of the summer. Make not take, but yeah. make twenty thousand. And uh, China, she did. She she made the most on the team. So her high post jumper, her her shot is looking a little bit better. Okay, I don't want to be this guy, but do we know she made twenty one thousand? I mean, was well, there video proof she there, could be fibbing? She she could have she could be, but the results speak for themselves. Okay. When when I watch her shoot her her jumpers now, <laughs> they actually look like they're going in. That's so. good. Yeah. I'm not meaning to doubt you, China. I'm just saying twenty one thousand is a lot in one summer. It's doable though. Okay. Very doable. All right. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you about someone who's new to the program. Yes. Destiny Adams coming yeah. in as a transfer. What mm -hmm. excites you about her? She has uh, such an, an enthusiasm. She plays with such ex um, expressiveness mm. and explosiveness. You know, she's a really explosive athlete. She gets after it on the defensive end. And uh, she's, a, she's a player that can score in multiple ways. You can move her around on the floor so she can play outside, she can play inside, she can put it on the floor. I love her versatility. Um, her versatility coupled with her explosiveness, I think she can be a big impact player in the Big Ten. What was the biggest thing you learned last year? You, you were in the Big Ten, you've seen great successes, mm -hmm. you left, you came back to the league, you had that difficult situation with a small roster. What do you think is the biggest takeaway you had from last year? Um, the, I would say the biggest takeaway that I had is that the the conference is growing. It's more competitive. Sometimes literally. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's more com it's more competitive. The talent level is is higher. There are more good players around the conference, um, and the coaching is still top notch. You know, you're going to get great coaching every time you go anywhere in the conference. Every opponent has has really good coaching. Um, so those are the the things that that I learned about the conference is that is still you know, it's still the premier conference in the country, and you've got to bring your A game every night. Because of the talent in this conference, it was hard for you guys to score mm -hmm. last year. I mean, there were a few things going against you, but one of them was your opponents. 
What gives you both the confidence that scoring will be up this season? I mean, we had we got new pieces that filled our gaps. In what ways? Like things we needed. We needed a point guard, someone to control our pace, and we have that. And Destiny just brings a lot of things to our team. She plays really hard, and I think that will help us benefit us. Um, on the additions to our team, um, they're great additions. Uh, to piggyback what Kayleen said, Destiny, she can play the three through five. She's really just versatile. And then Maya, Lisa, everyone's just, it's a great addition to the team. Just a perfect balance, I would say, a perfect balance. What needs to happen for offensive production to go up this year, Coach? Well, I think that we need to do a great job of sharing the ball. Um, number one, we've got to take care of the ball better. Last year, we, we, we were a very turnover-prone team. In part, that was because of our gaps that Kayleen alluded to. Um, but the new additions definitely have uh, filled those gaps. And if we can take care of the ball, share the ball, we've got a few more shot makers on our team this year. I think we'll, we'll be, be in better shape on the offensive end. How do you think Kayleen did now? I think she She was good. all right. You she know. was good. She's getting there. <laughs> Every now and then she get like 20, 25. She was all right. <laughs> Kayleen, China, and Kokuis, thanks so much for coming. Best of luck this season. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Great chatting with you guys. Well, I mentioned. Media days at the Target Center in Minneapolis, where the Big Ten Women's Basketball Tournament will be held early March, as it was last year. And you see the Cornhuskers are here. I mean, it was a Barbie summer, Alexis. I'm just saying. It was. The pink is working. We're <laughs> glad to bring up Alexis Markowski and Jazz Shelley, a couple preseason All Big Ten players. Before we introduce you to everyone, here's a look at the season. Nebraska was one of two teams to have multiple preseason All Big Ten selections. Had back-to-back -back winning seasons, something they haven't done in a while. Hosting a couple tournament teams from last year in non-conference play, and they're looking to make it an NCAA tournament appearance, which would be the second time in the last three years. Now, I mentioned Alexis and Jazz are joining us. This is Maddie Crawl. Now, we were going to have Amy Williams, but here's the deal. There's 14 different stations all around. There's multiple TV networks back there where people are trying to talk to people. So we don't know where Amy is. So guess what? We're going to pretend you're Amy. I'm going to ask you a bunch of head coaching questions. Okay. You're going to have to answer. Yeah, hit me with them. All right. I won't do that. We'll, we'll talk to you just as the player that you are. Let me ask all three of you. I thought it was... A bummer that you guys just missed the tournament. You were good enough. You had the talent. Nobody wanted to play you. You were a bubble team who played incredibly tough schedule. How long did that snub from the tourney linger in your minds? We'll just go down, starting with you, Alexis. Yeah, um, it really did suck to not make the tournament, but I think we did have a postseason run, and we could, had a lot of confidence um, from that, um, playing teams like Kansas and um, in the WNIT, but um, I think we're ready. I think we've worked really hard and we're really excited for this season. Yeah, obviously we fell short of some goals that we had for our team and obviously one of those is the NCAA tournament. So it definitely hurt, um, but I think we had a pretty quick turnaround because we had to play in the NIT and we're very thankful that we did that because we had some high quality teams that we got to play against, but also finished the season kind of on a high um, and being able to play some of those tough schedule teams in the NIT and some of the bubble teams are crazy. There was a lot of talent this year and we have the goals to make the tournament again this year and I think that everyone's ready to do that. Yeah, I really think, um, you know, falling short of some of our goals really drove what we did this summer and the competitiveness that we had in the gym. Um, I think personally, it's still kind of lingering, you know, that we missed. Um, but, but that I think could be healthy, right? Yeah, that's if healthy. Yeah, you. I feel like that drives, you know, that brings motivation to all of us. So um, I think it even kind of spread to our newcomers as well. You know, they they want to get there too. You know, I'm not sure if you folks at home could tell, but Jazz, with her accent, she's from Brooklyn. <laughs> and uh, uh, your partner from Australia, Izzy Bourne, no longer here. Uh -huh. Have you thought about getting her a wig and a mustache? And just, you know, calling her Lizzie Bourne and just seeing if she can get one more year <laughs> in Nebraska. Is that an option? I wish. I wish that Izzy was here. But um, she's having a lot of fun at home, throwing a boomerang around, probably. <laughs> <laughs> so we miss her, but we're really excited about what she's doing back in Australia and playing professionally. One of the things I know from calling your games last year was turnovers were much higher than any of you wanted. What makes you confident that will be down this year? I think our off season is what made it confident that that'll be down this year. I mean, it was something, it was a big emphasis to us. Um, ball security was big. Um, I think even with a new addition um, in Darian White and the return of Allison Widener, um, I think those are two, you know, 
really great point guards um, that are vital to us and our team. So that'll be really important. Yeah, I would say we're a team that plays in transition, so we're bound to have a few turnovers because we like to play quick. But we've been able to clean things up at practice, and everyone's getting along. Everyone's on the same page, and and the addition with Darian, she she's an incredible player, and we're, everyone loves loves playing with her at the moment. Yeah, we do have um, four new players, and uh, they all have been great additions, and just bring a lot of um, competitive juice uh, to the court. Now, I mentioned Amy Williams isn't here. Uh, we don't know where she is. Uh, I, I just want to know, if, if you were late to something, I mean, there there would be hell to pay, right? <laughs> what, what can we do to punish her? I mean, there's got to be something, right? Golly gee, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Amy, do you want to come something. on up here? Come on. Amy, Amy's here. Again, a ton of media assignments, so we <laughs> missed her a little bit. Hi, Coach. <laughs> we weren't saying anything negative about you. Oh, no, no. I, um, yeah, I was hearing the suggestions <laughs> of what they had for punishment, so... <laughs> Um, so let's keep you up here. You'll, you, we'll have Jazz be a part interviewer as okay. well. Okay, you can just okay. go back and forth okay. when we're talking. Um, I want you all to give me, you brought up Allison Widener. Why don't you all give me an idea of how important she is to this team? Because you didn't have her for last season. Um, I think Allison does all the little things for us. I think that she's such a competitor. Um, we talked about it just before we came out here. Before the ACL, she had an, a fingernail in the eye that caused a black and blue bruise to linger. She had stitches on her knee. Like, she just plays hard, and she's always on the floor, and she's always doing those hustle plays to get us ahead. So to have someone like that back, I think Allison may not be as big of a vocal presence for us, but she, like, leads by example. People want to be like her because of the way that she plays. Yeah, I would say she's a competitor, she's a warrior, people feed off her, and we're really excited to have her back. We've missed her. I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> I think there's Why a are reason. Why you here then? <laughs> I, know, I mean, uh, you guys, you guys uh, knew what you were doing, bringing these three up here instead. <laughs> I got to tell you, I, I've been saying this throughout this show. I think you guys are overlooked. I think this is a sneaky really dangerous team. I think your ceiling is right up there with some of the best teams in what is one of the best leagues in the conference. Tell me I'm crazy. Am I crazy? You're not crazy. No. I don't think you're crazy. Right? You're crazy. What <laughs> has you all most excited? Alexis, you start. Most excited about this team. Um, I kind of like that we are overlooked in the underdogs, and I think um, we really thrive off of that, and I'm looking forward to proving people wrong this season. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you can have two preseason first teamers and be overlooked, but um, yeah, good point. you know we do we do feel like that this is a group that um, you know has the potential to be one of the best teams. We know that if we're one of the best teams in the Big Ten Conference, we're going to be one of the best teams in the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've got a lot of people that are ready and willing and, and excited to step up and, and really um, help. You know, we've got some great returners and great leadership up here on this stage, but some really exciting and fun personalities that have come in as uh, some new players to kind of round us out. And so uh, we're very excited about what this, what this season could be for us. Yeah, I mean, they said it perfectly, and we're just going to remain consistent. I think that's one piece that we need is um, to prove people wrong, but we need to do it consistently, and that's what we're excited about, proving to people. They said it best. <laughs> you guys are on the same page on everything. <laughs> great having you here. Uh, thank you for coming. Appreciate having you. You were a great fill-in as a head coach. Thank you. If, if thank you, you want, just grab the clipboard from her some of these timeouts and be like, I got it, okay? I would love to see your face if I do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth a shot once, right? Yeah. Maddie, Jazz, Alexis, and Amy, great having you with us. Thank Thanks so much. A big day in Minneapolis indeed when you have the Iowa Hawkeyes on hand. They didn't just make it to the Final Four last year. They made it to the National Championship game and played one heck of a memorable game there getting ready for this upcoming season. They are the team to beat according to the preseason coaches and media polls. Ranked sixth in the country nationally. Your preseason player of the year in the league is here and they're trying to win the Big Ten tournament for the third time in a row. I am pleased to be joined at the set by Lisa Bluter, starting her 24th season at Iowa. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Gabby Marshall, who has started all 68 games the last two years. And yeah, 
I'm sorry. Who is who is, are you? Are you new here? <laughs> I'm new. Yeah. Introduce yourself. Freshman. Yeah. Oh, a fr oh, that's it. <laughs> Caitlin Clark is here with us. It is great to have all of you here. Let me go down the line. Coolest thing about making a Final Four. Hmm. Ooh, I would say just all the things we got to experience in Dallas leading up to the game. Just we, I mean, it was day after day, thing after thing. I mean, it was just awesome. I'd say that was like one of the coolest things. Yeah, I would agree with Gabby. A lot of activities to do, a lot of gifting experiences. <laughs> um, other than that, just the way our fans traveled, it was absolutely incredible. Kind of took over the arena and whether it felt like a lot of fans were just there to experience whether they had a ticket to get into the game. Uh, they kind of just wanted to be in the environment. I think one of the coolest things was the red carpet entrance uh, during the national championship game where we got to walk in outside the arena to get inside and our fans just packed the entire thing. People were on each other's shoulders. Um, just one of the <laughs> coolest experiences for ourselves. Yeah, I would have to say the fans were amazing. I mean, Iowa Hawkeye fans are incredible. But I also like the police escorts. I got home and I wanted to like, hey, can you get me a police escort right now? You know, come on. Uh, <laughs> she's not that special. Come on now. <laughs> so this season, expectations are high. you got a ton of talent back on this roster. There is a big name who's not on the roster, though. Sinano is gone. How does that change things for this team this season? You know, it really doesn't change a whole lot for us. It's just like we got to bring on the next person, right? And, uh, well, plus she you know, wasn't that good well <laughs> I mean she was overrated. you know I mean, and, and I keep telling people like don't <laughs> compare our centers now to Monica just like when Monica was a freshman and sophomore don't compare to Megan Gustafson who was the national player of the year so we we are our own person and, and don't compare her let her become great on her own schedule how has the development been of the players who will try to take mm. her minutes so far? Yeah, absolutely. I think there's, you know, three really good post players that we have, and I think they all do different things really, really well. But like Coach Bluter said, I think, you know, they don't need to be Monica. They can do things that Monica couldn't. They can do some things that Monica could. Um, but I think the biggest thing for our entire team in general is just understanding we don't have to be what we were last year. Every year is new. Um, we don't want to be who we were last year. That's that's not fair to that last year's team. It's not fair to the girls that didn't play as much. You know, this is a new experience. Um, so I think just making it our own, making this team, this year's team, 23 of 24, um, you know, have their own experience, be great in their own way. I think getting everybody to understand that that is, you know, one of the most important things for ourselves. How good can Hannah Stelke be this year, Gabby? Oh, I mean, she was good last year, she but was. just that jump from your freshman and sophomore year, you really need that. You really need that off season just to develop your game more, mm -hmm. gain confidence. I mean, I think the biggest thing for her is going to be confidence, and that's going to come from Caitlin and I as two captains of this team, and a lot, as well as Kate, just making sure that she knows we believe in her and we believe what she can do on that court and what she brings to this team is really, really, really needed. There's obviously so much attention on you, Caitlin, because of everything you do on the court, which is magical. Mm. But there are so many great players on your team who don't get talked about mm. enough. How about that cat to your left right now? Let's talk <laughs> about the end of the regular season when yeah. she was shooting like 90% <laughs> yeah. from deep. What was it like watching that? I wanted to get Gabby the ball whenever I could. Um, you know, I think the biggest thing about Gabby was just her perseverance. Obviously, started off the season struggling a little bit, but she never hung her head. She came out and played really great defense every single game, and she gets the toughest assignment every time we take the floor, um, and it's something she accepts. She loves that challenge, um, but she understood we needed her to get hot, and I think the only bright spot when we went and played at Mar Maryland and got beat was Gabby played really, really good. She shot the ball really well, um, and then she kind of took that the whole rest of the year, and for us, I think that was one of the biggest keys is Gabby was playing amazing. Um, I don't think people realize how well she shot the ball. Um, our game in this building versus Maryland, she was the person that won us that game. She was incredible. Um, so, I mean, her shooting doesn't get enough credit. Her defense doesn't get enough credit. Um, you know, she's somebody that's not talked about enough but has done a lot for this program and now her fifth year. So um, I'm lucky to have a teammate like her, a friend like her. She's, she's incredible. What was that run like when things started heating up for you in February and March? You know, I think, I mean, obviously I went through a big slump and the biggest thing for me was just not feeling sorry for myself and kind of doing something about it, letting my teammates pour into me, giving me that confidence that, I mean, I'm a great shooter and they knew that and I know that and I think I needed that moment here um, in the Big Ten tournament just to kind of turn the switch and like, just, I mean, it was kind of a feeling of relief, like I'm helping the team in a way I know they need me going into this Final Four run. So, I mean, it was awesome to be hitting, the, hitting shots at the right time. Yeah. We're all going to be together on Sunday for a really special event. The crossover at Kinnick. You're going to be playing DePaul outside in Kinnick Stadium. How excited are all of you for this opportunity? 
You know, I'm excited because it kicks off women's basketball nationally. I mean, this will be the first televised women's basketball game. Uh, you know, we're going to have 50,000 people there. Uh, we're going to play in front of more fans than any any women's team has ever played in front of. And so it's really special that we get to work at a university that embraces this, that thinks outside of the box, and that wants to do something special. Yeah, I'm super excited. Um, I think getting to watch Nebraska volleyball and what they did was yeah. just kind of you know a little taste cool? of what we're gonna do. Yeah, but also I think you know 50,000 people. That's basically three Carver Hawkeye arenas. More than that, um, <laughs> and hopefully ticket numbers continue to grow as we approach Sunday. But also all the proceeds are going to the Children's Hospital, which is a big part of our university. And you know student athletes always go over there and interact with the kids that are over there. So um, I think it's a really special experience, but also for a really great cause. So um, you know go out there and play good basketball, but also enjoy it because like we said. It's a historic a historic moment yeah I'm really excited I thought 15,000 was a lot so <laughs> playing in front of like 50 plus thousand people is going to be amazing I mean we get to run out of the tunnel and do the wave just like football does so it's going to be just all around a great day and then I mean it kind of puts the sport in perspective you're playing for something bigger than just basketball and knowing that mm -hmm. there's kids watching you that are fighting much bigger battles so have you guys talked to anyone? I mean, nobody's really done this, but like, you know, Tom Izzo's done an aircraft carrier game. I'm sure back in the day, you guys played a bunch of games outside where wind had to be a factor. Have you guys talked to anyone about, about how to be ready for something like this? No. You know, we really haven't, but our wrestling team had a, right. a game or a match against Oklahoma Outdoors. State uh, in Kinnick about five years ago, and it went off beautifully, so why not us? Yeah. yeah. I mean, we kind of joke plan. about the wind. Yeah, we kind of just accept there might be a few air balls. Yeah. But, I mean, I, personally, I'm not going to a park to practice before <laughs> yeah. we play out there. We're going to have a shoot around the day before, so that'll be nice. But um, everybody pray for good weather. That's yes. the thing we need. So. Let's keep it dry, right? Yeah. Let's keep the rain away. It's going to be such a cool event. Uh, Caitlin, Gabby, and Lisa, always great seeing you guys. Have a great Thanks, season. Mike. Good Thank to you. see you, Mike. Okay, we got a fit check here with Purdue women's basketball. You got Janae Terry, Madison Layden, and Abby Ellis here. I, th I think thumbs up on the fit check, right? Double thumbs up. Double thumbs up. Yeah, everything's working well for the Boilermakers, not just in fashion, but on the basketball court as well. Last year, a successful run, made it to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2017. Added some transferred, added some big recruits. They are ready to play. And as I mentioned earlier, the arrow is pointing up in West Lafayette. And the other thing is, Listen, we, we don't follow rules. We're Boilermakers, right? We might only have four mics and we might only have four chairs, but we're going to bring everybody up. We've got Madison, we've got Janae, Katie Geralds, and Abby Ellis. Uh, let me go down the line. What was the thing that you were most pleased with from last season? I think just getting back to the tournament. Um, you know, that's you know that, that's where we feel like Purdue belongs, and uh, it was good to be back in it. All right, now you got to share the mic, oh, though. We're right. going over to yeah. <laughs> Uh I agree with Katie going to the tournament, and I think, um, you know, having a few upsets, like, you know, at Ohio State and at Illinois, having those ranked wins, um, yeah, that was, that was some good times. Yeah, I mean, I would say the same. Like, just being able to make it back to the tournament, I think someone said the last time was 2017. So, obviously, um, just – being on being on the rise so and just making it just uh is, is special for our team um and then yeah just to recap what everybody said um just making it to the tournament was pretty huge just to show that we can get there um and just being able to see that and visually seeing it um was incredible and then just again those big two wins against ohio state and illinois um and also being an sec team um just showing that we can play in different uh levels and different type of style of basketball so okay so let's go back down the other way where do you want to improve as a team the most this year from last year? Um, just scoring the basketball at a more consistent level um, and just getting more consistent scores. Um, and again, that's that's partially on me as well. Um, just just showing people that we can score the basketball. Um, I think a lot of times we might have a couple low uh, scoring games or a couple high scoring games, but just staying at a consistent level. Yeah, I think uh, for us, just knowing that we can make it to the tournament and uh, with this year making it to the tournament, but, but not only making it, winning games in the tournament, I think is a is a big goal for us this year. Yeah. Oh, see, we're all sharing yeah. much. Now this <laughs> is teamwork, people. Um, I think uh, protecting our home court, Mackey Arena, you know, trying and um, win every game we play once we step foot on that court. So that's something we want to do this season. What about you? Uh, just taking another step. You know, uh, I feel like the first two years we took some steps. Last year we took another step and just making sure we're taking the steps in the right direction. 
There is one statistic line that stood out from last season. Uh, Janae almost had a quad double. I don't understand how that's possible. How does one person put up that great of a statistical line? Was well, What stopped her from the quad? Was it points? Because normally she it's points. She one point and two steals away yeah. from double digits in four categories. I don't know why, they're, why her coach wouldn't let her be Thank out you. there. This is what I was getting at. Why wouldn't she do that? <laughs> <laughs> let me ask you two. What makes her special, Janae? Oh, okay. Um, honestly, she literally can do anything and everything on the court. She rebounds. She she can shoot it. She can pass it. Like you know, you have you have a teammate there, a guard that will literally let allow you to play how you play. I love playing with Janae, and you know she shares the ball. Uh, she has sight like no other, and like you know gets hands on everything. So, uh, yeah, great passer, uh, great mid range shooter, um, and obviously great great rebounder as well so I think that's special for us to have a rebounder like she is uh, when she's the point guard being able to uh, push the ball in transition I have some breaking news that I don't think any of you are aware of you have three sets of sisters on the team I know right I none of you, exactly you had no idea what is that like like for example how hard did you have to recruit your sister <laughs> uh not too hard. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, the coaches did most of the work, so yeah. That is a pretty weird coincidence, though. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it just speaks to our culture, yeah. uh, really. You know, just wanting to be be around um, what we're building. Obviously, McKenna coming in. Um, Caitlin was on our roster last year. Elena joining, and then getting the Reynolds back in the state of Indiana. So um, it's fun. You know, normally if Madison makes a mistake, then I can you know, go to McKenna and Raz on Madison a little bit. So, uh, and, and vice versa. It happens often, but no, it, it's a, it's a really fun, unique dynamic within our team. Which pair of sisters has the tightest bond? Ooh. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's a tough question. I, they're all, seeing them in the gym all together, it's like one and the same, truthfully. But like, probably, I would say Elena and Caitlin, yeah. like they're locked in like on and off the court, like, paired up for and, sure and are the ladens just fighting all the yeah, time just all the time it's terrible I mean, <laughs> just yeah we don't even want to be around each other much <laughs> we so. we can't even put them on opposite because then they just start throwing punches <laughs> uh seven freshmen or red shirt freshmen on this year's roster katie if i if i if i have that uh correct what has you most excited about the young players on this year's team uh, I think that their ability and opportunity to learn behind the five returners that we have, um, you know, I think in that regard, we're in really good hands um, with our five returners. And then we've got a group of young people who just love Purdue. Um, and, you know, it, just the culture that we've we've started to grow and, and you know, the, the eight new ones, but specifically the six freshmen that, that we recruited really hard, um, they love black and gold. Yeah. All right, this is for you three. Tell me something I don't know about your head coach. Anything. Basketball related, unrelated to basketball, something. Mm. She loves Dr. Pepper. Yeah. Hard to argue that. Yeah. I think she would choose her dog, Coda, over any of us to hang out with for like a day. And nothing wrong with that <laughs> either. I mean, dogs wow. are great. You guys said like two great things. Oh, my gosh. Um, yeah, Coda. You guys probably will get to see Coda. Really? Yeah. We're going to bring Coda to some games? Hey, you never know. The way okay. we do it at Purdue, you never know. Coda might, you never know, I'm yeah. telling you. But, yeah, Coda's amazing. So All right. That's what you One game. Know. One game I'm calling, you'll bring Coda. Maybe Coda can be the halftime show. Look, yeah. <laughs> if they would let me, Coda would be right here. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Ladies, thank you so much for joining us. Congratulations on the nice season last year. Good luck this year. Thank, thank you. you. Well, that's what it looked like for the Terps on their way from Maryland here in Minneapolis. Maryland basketball, a 28-win program last year, made it all the way to the Elite Eight. They're picked to be a top four team in the league this year again, top 15 nationally, have some brutal road games coming up, and they've added a big-time transfer as well in Jakia Brown-Turner in the offseason. Cheyenne Sellers, Brene Alexander, and Faith Masonis have joined us here on the set. You know, last year there were a bunch of questions, some unproven parts of this team, and then as I mentioned, you win almost 30 games and make it to the Elite Eight. How satisfying was last year for you? Let me start with you, Faith, and we'll go on down. Um, I think it was a lot of fun, you know, so many new people coming in, and we kind of just paved our own way, and prove people wrong. I think it was satisfying because we kind of like 
proved our doubters wrong. Um, I think it was a, a lot of stuff going on where people didn't think that we'd get our chemistry right or that we'd, you know, be a little off since it was so many new pieces. But I think we really came together and just proved everybody wrong. I think, like you guys said, just it was awesome to come in, and I know people were doubting us, but I think that trend has to stop. Um, <laughs> I think we've proved it time and time again. Um, so, um, yeah. Cheyenne, let me ask you, there's no Abby Myers anymore, no Diamond Miller. How is your role going to be different this year? It's not. Uh, <laughs> really? <laughs> I'm going to play my game. I know people are expecting me to try to take over, and, you know, I'm, I'm not Diamond. I'm not Abby. I don't play their game. I play my game, and, and if that's your scouting report of Cheyenne's going to just drive to the rim, it's not going to work out well. How about off the court, though? Do you feel your position on the team as a leader or as a, someone who speaks up or anything? Is that different or is that exact same as it was last year, too? It's the exact same. I mean, I've been the same way as I was when I came in as a freshman. I'm very outspoken. Um, I speak up when I think things are wrong and I speak up when I think things are right. Um, sometimes a little bit too much, but <laughs> um, I, I always do my best to try to be the best person, not the best leader for the team, but just a, a good person in general. Does she speak up too much, guys? <laughs> oh, no that's a yes. That's a yes. <laughs> Who talks more? Than, does Cheyenne talk more than anybody on the team? Not me, you mean like on, on the, the court. Floor? Yeah, no, <laughs> not it's on the court. Me and Faith on the floor. On the court. Yeah, yeah, no. On the court. Yeah. You two do the most chatter on the court. Yeah, yes. because we, we have to. We have to. I think just that veteran leadership, like. We know how to talk like constantly, like nonstop, like not stopping. So, yeah. Yeah. Brene, let me talk to you. At Vanderbilt, you never made the NCAA tournament, mm -hmm. and you did right away your first year. Yes. What was last season like for you? Um, it was phenomenal. It was actually like a dream come true. Um, I never thought I would be in this position that I am now. So, I am very thankful to Coach B and to even like my teammates for um, supporting me and helping me. Um, let's like get to the NCAA tournament. Um, I think it was really fun. It was a great experience and I can't wait to go back. How long did it take for you to feel comfortable in your role on the team last year? It actually was pretty challenging. It took a while. I think it was a big difference coming from um, Vanderbilt, like being a starter, being like leading scorer. It was definitely a different role, but I knew I was giving up some things to gain going to the NCAA tournament, to um, gain beating ranked teams, being on a ranked team. So I think it did take a little while for me to get adjusted. We also had injuries, so we had a lot of people playing in different roles that I didn't even think that they were going to play in. Um, but I definitely got more comfortable once we started peaking towards the end of the season, and I think that's when we really started going on our run. What happened when Cheyenne hit that Purdue buzzer beater, Faith? <laughs> we all thanked her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, uh, I mean, hey, it was a good, it was a good game, but the play wasn't even first shot, yeah. first shy, but you know, in the end, she she hit that three, and it was it was a good game. It was our second buzzer beater of the yes. the season. So. And in in, in in Coach B's yeah. six hundredth win. So yes, it was, was very fun celebrating win. that. Yes, I, we I had bet to that get was that a one. fun yes. post game celebration, <laughs> for sure. Uh, explain to me the value that this faith character brings to your team. I think Faith just adds so much value like to our team just because like one she like is always the one talking on the court like always trying to make sure that everyone is like in the right spot. She puts everyone else before herself sometimes too much and she gets lost. <laughs> I'm like Faith you need to stop talking to everybody and worry about you. Um, but I mean without Faith I think this Maryland team would not be where we are. Yeah I would definitely say Faith is like the glue of our team like Swiss Army Knife she does it all talking, diving on the floor, hustle plays, cleanup plays. Um, and I think she, like every team needs a person like that, but it's very great to have her as a teammate. Yeah. Thanks, and, guys. <laughs> that was so nice, wasn't it? Uh, let me ask you about uh, Jakira Brown-Turner, the transfer come in from, friend, from uh, NC State. Yes. What have you learned about her so far? Oh, Jakia. <laughs> we're very excited to have her. Um, she, you know, she brings so much versatility on the court, and we're just excited to – Get the games going and see what she can do at Maryland. What's yeah. her game like? Um, she's very versatile. She's just a three-way guard, really. Can shoot, put on the floor, um, can defend, can rebound. We love Jakia, and I think she fits into our um, like our style of play very, very well. Yeah, I was gonna say Jakia is just versatile. She fits. She plays Maryland basketball. Yeah. that's really what it comes down to. She can run. She can shoot. She can defend. Um, She'll blend in right yeah. away. Yeah. And another veteran leader yeah. to add to the squad. How will this team seem most different this year compared to last year? I think every single year the team is different. Yeah. Right. Um, 
I think more this year than we did last year. We have more size. Right. We have that experience now of playing in the Big Ten. These these players that we had come in last year, they might have had experience, but maybe not the experience in the Big Ten because it's it's a whole different level. So I think this year just take a, another step forward with that experience and the size, which we love. Yeah. Right. Is there so, who is the player on this roster that people aren't talking about that by the end of the season they're going to be talking about? I would say Allie. I would give you two. I would say Riley Nelson. Oh, Riley Nelson. Yes. The and freshman, big yeah. talent. Freshman, and then um, Emma. Emma's come Emma. such a Chardon. Yes, yes, has come such a far. You, I would, I would put Emma. Like if we had a most improved award, Emma would win that in a yeah, heartbeat. Yeah, for sure. Coming off injury too. Coming yeah. off injury, like moving great. She looks great. She looks a lot more confident yeah, everything. Much more confident herself, oh, for we're sure. We're looking forward to seeing them and you all season long. Cheyenne, Brene, and Faith. Thanks so much for your time, guys. Best of luck this season. Thank, Thank you. you. Good morning, Minneapolis. So says Penn State women's basketball. They are ready to take on Big Ten Media Day and then the Big Ten basketball season. Here's what the outlook is like. They have been improving in the win total every single year. Carolyn Keeger has been a part of this. McKenna Marisa named a preseason All-Big Ten selection. Ashley Owusu, who is a star at Maryland, has now transferred over to Penn State after being at Virginia Tech last year. And they're looking to make the NCAA tournament and break a long drought. We are glad to bring up McKenna Marisa, Ashley Owusu, and Leilani Kapanis here on the set with me. I, uh, that graphic showed it. The program has literally gained in wins every single season that Carolyn Keeger has been your head coach. How come? I think just because she's she knows how to bring the best out of every, every one of her players. How come? Yeah, um, I mean, like kind of what, what Lay just said, um, she pushes us every single day. And, um, you know, Lay and I <laughs> have been here for a while, um, but every single year, you know, as the seniors have kind of been under her, um, We've been able to help out, you know, with with her system and what she wants, um, and her, you know, standard every single year. Um, so, it yeah, like you said, um, just keeps getting better. And obviously, we have Ash now, and we have some great transfers um, that we added. So we're super excited. Ashley, what can we learn for you from last year that you can take into this year to help you out? Um, I would just say coming in every day ready to work. Um, you know, I had an injury last year, uh, very unexpected. So just coming in every day, practice, game, uh, not taking anything for granted. How are you different now from when we last saw you in the Big Ten when you were at Maryland? Um, I would just say I'm a lot different uh, mentally, physically. Uh, I'm a little older now. So um, definitely just coming in every day ready to work. Um, this is my last year, final go round, So I'm super excited to be around so many great people. Um, and I'm just excited to get to work. And what made you want Penn State? Um, I would just say the family atmosphere. And I could tell, you know, everyone is uh, very hardworking, whether it's on the court, off the court. Um, and I'm just happy to be surrounded uh, by such great people. McKenna, what do you remember about facing her back in the day? <laughs> Um, a lot. <laughs> uh, I've been telling people I've always been a fan of Ashley's game. Um, she's an all-around player, and not even that. Like she just makes her teammates around her better. Um, so I'm, I am ecstatic to play with her. Lilani, finish this sentence. When our press is working, it's because. <laughs> it's because. <laughs> I'm at the top of the key getting deflections, hey. and I know I got my teammates behind me ready to intercept those balls, and uh, yeah. Should leave anything out? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think whenever, you know, whenever we're communicating, I think, but I think Lay kind of summed it up. Whenever Lay's at the top of the key getting deflections, whoever it is, um, and we're communicating, talking to each other, getting getting after it, I think that's when our, our defense is best. Our okay, press finish is best. this sentence. When our press is not working, it's because... <laughs> Not communicating. <laughs> the opposite. Yeah, not communicating. Not on the same page as each other. Not doing what we're, we practice. Um, so, yeah, that's what I'd say. What surprised you two about Shea Chesky last year? She made big strides very quickly, it felt like. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Shay surprises me every single day. Um, her work ethic, she gets in the gym every single day. Um, and... She is constantly just working on her game, getting up shots, um, and she improves every single day. Like you, if if you came to practice, you'd see um, every single day she's just getting better. Um, she's growing, um, and she's really becoming into a, a player that a very exciting player that I'm excited for people to watch. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? How did she grow? 
Honestly, well, you said surprise. I, I haven't been surprised because I've seen her in the gym every single day, day in, day out. So I'm excited for the Big Ten to see what she can do. Um, we all know it. We all see it in practice. So it's going to be a great year for her. How did you grow last season? To this season? Yeah. Like, how are you a different player now from 12 months ago? Yeah, I've really been working on my outside game, my shot, and watching film, breaking down defensive play, defensive uh, analysis. So um, really focusing on uh, keeping my strengths, my strengths, and making my weaknesses better. Six transfers on the team this season, I believe. Yep. What is that like as the outsider coming in? Like, how long does it take you to feel comfortable in your role on the team? And then when, when you're done answering, I want to know what you guys feel on, on how you welcome in a transfer and what, what, yeah. that's, what that responsibility is like. Yep. Um, honestly, I don't even feel like an outcomer. Um, you know, my transition has been very smooth, whether it's on the court, off the court. Everyone has been super supportive, super helpful. So it's been a pretty smooth ride. How do you try to make sure these new transfers adapt quickly because that's hard to do I would think you're learning a new town a new system a new coach new teammates yeah I yeah mean, I would just say we just treat them as family and I know like I put myself in their position when I was a freshman new drills like new terms like I just try to tell them things before practice or during drills on the sidelines as much as I can but yeah what would you say yeah um I would say the same thing is like you know we're always we try to be as welcoming as possible um and we know they're they're here to they're going to help the program so much. Um, and not even that, like, they're going to help us. And we learn a lot from them. Like, I learned from Ashley. I learned from Taylor. I learned from Jayla. You know, all of our transfers that come in. Um, and they, every single one of them brings something that we need um, to the team. So, you know, it's a lot of learning from each other. And, um, you know, we've all just really gotten along. And we're, we're starting to click on the court. So it's cool to see. Yeah. Yeah. Offense last year, McKenna, felt balanced compared to the year before. Yeah. How does it stay balanced this year? Yeah, absolutely. Um, our main goal uh, is always balance offense, you know, and sharing the ball, uh, making sure we're making the right reads. You know, we have a lot of shooters, a lot of great talent on this team. Uh, so there's, you know, there's no need for one of us to be taking all the shots or, um, you know, whatever it is, just making the right basketball read, um, hitting who's the hot hand, uh, whatever it is, you know, that night, um, and just playing balanced basketball. I think that's really what Penn State's about. So. Yeah. Let me ask each of you to go down. Tell me the biggest area you're working on individually for your game this season. Individually, I would probably just say improving my three-point shot. Um, in the past, I don't think it's been terrible, but I just don't think I've taken it enough. So I've just been making a con conscious effort to, you know, get threes up, whether it's in practice or, um, you know, workouts, just so I can improve my average. McKenna? I would say slowing myself down, slowing my game down, being more patient. Um, and I kind of mentioned it, but, like, just making the, the right basketball read, whatever that is, you know, making that extra pass. Um, and also just using my voice more, um, uh, being that upperclassman, um, the fifth year. Um, so the, that's probably the biggest, you know, thing for me. Yeah, I'd say my three-point shot and just finishing in the paint, slowing down and staying balanced and um, just, like, off two feet type of thing. Final question, is having fun more fun? Absolutely. <laughs> you knew it was coming. Knew you it was knew coming. it was coming. Leilani, <laughs> Ashley, and McKenna, great seeing you guys. Have a great you season. Too. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks. Time to turn our attention to the Ohio State Buckeyes, one of the most dangerous, one of the most exciting teams to watch in the country. They are here in Minneapolis, and they are ready to roll on this season. Picked to be in the top three by both the coaches and the media, ranked in the top ten nationally. Brought in Celeste Taylor, a huge offseason addition, Defensive Player of the Year in the ACC last year. And, of course, they're challenging themselves in non-conference play once again. Happy to bring in Ricky Harris, J.C. Sheldon, and head coach Kevin McGuff. I, just some newbies, right, here? Some folks who don't know anything about your program. What are they, in their ninth year, each of them? They've been here longer than I have, I think. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if you guys saw. Uh, the Final Four is going to be in the state of Ohio this year. It'll be in Cleveland. What would it be like? Just, just We're in the preseason. We can dream. What would it be like, Ricky, to be playing in front of potentially home fans in the Final Four? It'd be great. Um, like I said, home fans, home court advantage. So that's what we're aiming to do. 
It'd be fun. Buckeye Nation would, would definitely make the trip. So that's our goal, and we're going to work hard every day to get there. Thanks for bringing it up, Mike. You're the first person that's done that. <laughs> I'm original, Kevin. If yeah. nothing, it's not like 500 people in Columbus have mentioned that. <laughs> I bet uh, that would be home. This off season, you went far away. Brazil was where we were. Give me favorite memory. Hiking up to Christ the Redeemer. Ooh, what was it like? It's about a two-hour hike straight up through the jungle. It was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? Um, I'm a big ocean fan, so going in the ocean and just being able to do that with the teammates was pretty fun. <laughs> say jumping off the boat in the ocean, that was really nerve-wracking <laughs> but fun. <laughs> was there a team bonding activity, like you jump off a cliff into a river Gosh. or something like that that you all do together that stands out, a moment that you're like, oh, I felt like we, we got together when this I happened. I thought, uh, like I didn't go out there, but they went paddleboarding out in the ocean, and that, that seemed like a pretty good event. They were kind of all helping each other out there. Yeah. Scary? It was very scary. I was terrified, but it was a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> Hard to stand. So, like I said, most of the time, but it was fun. I watched her fall a lot. So, <laughs> uh, I mentioned that on the court this year, you're bringing in a big transfer in Celeste. Uh, it, here's an obvious question What made you want her on this team? Well, first of all, I tried to get her three times. I finally got her so <laughs> out of high school. And then when she left Texas, so it finally worked out for us. But one, she brings like a, a maturity and, and a great level of experience. She's played in big games. She played with USA Basketball. She's just got great experience, number one. And then the other part of it is, you know, I think she's going to be great in our press. And yeah. we, we need to take a step, though, in the half court defensively, and we need to be a little bit better. She's going to be a big part of that. And I think just in a different offensive system like we play, she's going to have a chance to uh, showcase her offensive skill set as well. Casey, what was it like when you found out a defensive player of the year was coming to join your defense? I was really excited. Um, you can already see what she does for this team. Uh, compliments our defense very well. Going to fit into our press really well. And like Coach said, she's already complimenting our half-court defense too. So super excited, really good person, um, really good teammate, and we're excited to have her. I mentioned the, the press you guys run. It is just thrilling to watch. I mean, it is thrilling to call a game. It is thrilling to sit at home and watch it. What is it like when you're in the middle of it? When you're doing one of those, we got a turnover, we scored. <laughs> we got another turnover, we scored. We forced a shot clock violation. Like, those spurts happen all the time with you guys when it's clicking. What's it like when you're in the moment when that's happening? Chaotic. Um, <laughs> it's chaotic, but it's fun, and it makes us thrive and want to go harder and keep going. And I think that's the best thing for us. It's exciting. I think, like Ricky said, it's it's chaotic at times, but at the end of the day, we get to cheer for each other when things go our way. So make each other better in the press and, and just kind of build excitement um, and add excitement to the game. What's your favorite part about watching it when it's working? Well, it's kind of organized chaos because there is you know a little more rhyme and reason and organization to it than people think. Um, and our kids really have that down. But but I love it, and you know, I love the, the fact that it gives us a chance to wear on other teams, and yeah. I think that has a big impact on the game. Oh, for sure it does. Uh, you know, last year when we were here at Media Day, I asked you who's going to have a breakout year, and you said Taylor Theory, no doubt. I think she's great. I, I'm telling you, when I watch her in practice, she's and then she blossomed. What was it like watching her do that last year? It was great. I mean, she's such a great kid. Uh, she shows up every day, works incredibly hard. She's very disciplined. She works on her game, and I think I still think she's going to have another breakout year this year. I hmm. really do. I think you're going to see another level to Ter Taylor Theory's game. Yeah. What? Wait. What's that level going to be? Well, I think she's going to score the ball a little bit more from the perimeter. Um, I think she's going to be a little more dynamic defensively, and so it's going to be a great year for her. All right, Nostradamus, what about this year's team? You can't pick her. Give me another player that you think maybe we're not talking about, but we will be by the end of the season. Well, um, I think Diana Collins has come in as a freshman. I think she's, she's really uh, shown to be a really great player and a great fit in our system, so I think she's going to really help us this year. Okay. Uh, talk to me about Madison Green. What value does she bring to the program? She brings a lot of value. She brings a lot of heart and soul to the team. She's had a couple rough years, but that never stops her from supporting us, and we support her, but she's just been there for us as much. So it's just great to see her overcome what she's had to overcome. We got to wrap her in bubble wrap. We got to keep her healthy oh, yeah. and get her on the floor, JC, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like Ricky said, great player, even better person. And just having her, you know, still around as much as she is, is helps us. And we're able to help her too as much as we can. And we're excited to get her healthy because she's an excellent player. And that's the thing. To think of what you guys did last year without such an important member being there, it's 
it, it makes me think that that ceiling can be even higher for you guys this year. Uh, Tyre Parks transfers in from Michigan State. What will her role be? Really important addition for us because, you know, we've got we've had really good post players like Rebecca is a great offensive player. She's got a great skill set, um, but we've struggled a little bit around the basket, especially with our defense and our rebounding. And, and Tyre brings a, a really strong physical presence that's going to really help. I remember, JC, when the injury happened uh, last year, I was asking you, what is it like being a cheerleader? And you're like, I'm doing my best, but I hate it. I just want to get out there. <laughs> what was she like as a teammate when she couldn't be on the floor with you guys? She was great. I mean, her attitude never changed. It still felt like she was out there. And she just was very communicative. Like, she kept us in line and in check, so it was perfect. I think it was good for her to experience that, but I'm very happy that she's back. <laughs> what was the hardest part about going through that? Um, just not being able to play, um, you know, especially with, with these girls in the group we had. Um, something I hadn't been through, but I learned a lot from it. Um, and this coming season, I'm just excited to be out there healthy and playing with them again. All right, I've gone this long without asking you about Cody. <laughs> what was it like, let me start with you two, playing with her last season, making such an impact in her first year with the program? Yeah, Cody's a great person even better player and, and teammate. Um, she's really fun to play with. Her energy is is unlike anyone else's, I think. We like to say when Cody's doing well, you know, it, it goes throughout the whole team and we're all doing well. So her passion and her will to win is amazing and it's just fun to play with. Yeah, just to pick back off that, she's very passionate on both ends of the court and she has a lot to do. Like she's just willing to go as hard as she can no matter what. And with this off season, she's grown a lot. So I'm excited for you guys to see what she's accomplished. Wait, she's grown a lot this off season? How so? <laughs> You know, we set two goals for her. Um, one was to, you know, improve her efficiency from the three-point line, okay. and she's worked really hard at that. And, and then also to use her passion, energy on the defensive end to be an elite defender because she was good last year, but I think there's another level in both of those areas, and I think you're going to see it this year. Jeez, that's terrifying. You guys are going <laughs> to be terrifying this season. It's going to be awesome to watch. Um, who's the hardest worker on this roster? I don't think you can pick just one, to be honest. I think uh, we got That's a, a team. Answer, right? yeah. <laughs> we have She's a team right. full of competitors and people who love to compete. So going against each other every day is a lot of fun. Yeah, I would say it's anyone, any day. It just depends on the day, but everybody's giving it their all. Give me the area of your game that the two of you are trying to work on the most this upcoming season. Yeah, I worked on a lot of my free throws. I think I have a better percentage, so that was a big thing for me and just being more consistent from the three-point line. So that's my main focus right now. Yeah, I want to improve in, you know, any aspect I can, whether it's, you know, mid-range, you know, shooting out far and uh, just being a leader, too, and being vocal. Last question. What do I have to do to earn a dub chain? <laughs> <laughs> so to Coach McGuff. <laughs> you got to get in the locker room. Okay, get in the locker room. <laughs> Lift some weights. That's right. Put the effort. Very good. Uh, Ricky, JC, and Kevin, great seeing you guys. Thank you. Super Thank fun. you. Have a great season. Thank you. The champs are here. The champs are here. The reigning Big Ten champions checking in Indiana women's <laughs> basketball. There was a was this a photo booth we were doing? Is that what these are all yeah, from? Bit. That's nice. I'm not in there though. Well, we'll get you in here. All right. Here's the outlook for this season. First off, predicted to be in the top three by both the coaches and the media. Top ten nationally. Got some non-conference games against traditional powers and have been a top four seed in the tournament three consecutive years. Thrilled to bring in Mackenzie Holmes, the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year. Chloe Moore McNeil, who led the team in minutes played last year. And the head coach, or should I say, the AP National Coach of the Year, Terry Moore. So first question, is Terry just like walking around practice going, oops, here's my award for Coach of the Year. Oh, it's in the middle of the floor. Nobody <laughs> trip over this. Sorry, guys. Just shoving it in your face all the time. No, Coach is very humble. Um, <laughs> She probably, if we didn't see it through social media, she probably wouldn't even tell us that she won these awards. <laughs> but how upset she is. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky, luckily enough, um, we were able to surprise her with the AP Coach of the that Year award, cool which moment. was really special. That was a very cool yeah. moment. She's still humble, though, Chloe. Of you got to keep her down, of keep course. her grounded. <laughs> For sure. Where is the award, by the way? It's in my office. Okay. Yeah, it's in the office. Um... Look how cool and casual you are. You are the <laughs> national coach of the year. How cool is that? I don't know where else to put it. <laughs> so the office it is. What was the honor like when that moment happened? Oh, and they well, surprised first you? of all, there's just not a lot of secrets that happen around that place without me knowing. Yeah. Right. And so for them to be able to pull it off, 
um, again, completely, completely um, not ready for that moment. I, you know, I literally, they set me up. I was going to be inter uh, interviewed by a Big Ten uh, correspondent that was there. Um, and uh, all of a sudden, here comes Mac and Grace. And I'm like, wait a minute, where's this going? And so, um, you know, my family was there, obviously, just a complete surprise. But, uh, you know, one of the, and you have a lot of good moments, right? But one of my top ten I bet. Uh, most favorite moments. I bet. Yeah. You mentioned Grace. She was just so important in ways that I don't even have a full grasp on because I wasn't in, you know, the huddles like you guys were all the time. So I know you can't replace her. But the thing is, you look at your roster. Holy cow. I mean, last year, Sydney comes in and replaced her as the starter, and you guys blossomed, and you have so many different pieces. What is it like having this much depth on one roster? Well, it's very similar to last year. You know, we feel like we had, uh, you know, depth once again, um, our, our last year. And so, you know, here we are and, uh, you know, feel really good about, you know, having four out of the five starters back. Uh, but um, also uh, really believing that the work that Lily Meister and Lexi Bargesser, and then you add in our freshman crew, Jules and uh, Lene and uh, Sharnice. Um, and so you know, we got some um, really good pieces that we think um, and believe that can help us, um, you know, do the things that uh, we continue to want to do, and that's win a lot. Chloe, how did you process, what did you guys as a team do to get over the disappointing loss in the NCAA tournament and move forward? Yeah, um, like you said, it's actually not something you can get over. And as a matter of fact, it's something you take it, you learn from it, and you grow from it and use it as motivation going into the next season. What about you, Mackenzie? How do you feel about that? Yeah, I think uh, it's important to learn from it, but I don't think we can let it take away all that we did accomplish last year. And, uh, you know, we did something that hadn't been done in 40 years, and I think that that's very special. And we can't let that one loss kind of define the entire season. And that being said, I know how driven you are and trying to get better every day. Was there a thing from that game that you go, well, we can take X and learn from sure. it and try to do better? Well, you know, we always say that the beginning is the most important part. And um, we say that in practice all the time as well. And so, uh, you know, we had a – and give Miami credit. Right. Um, uh, they came out and, and punched us right from the start. And so, um, you know, it took us at least, you know, that – Midway, you know, through the after the halftime, I guess we came out. We looked like a different team, but uh, so important that uh, you get off to really good starts. And um, you know, we we will take that into this year uh, as just a reminder. And then hopefully, um, you know, if we're blessed enough to be in a similar situation um, in March, we will uh, remember the lesson. Right. Yeah. You know, last year, I remember Grace, I was asking her about Chloe, and she says, oh, she's sassy in practice. Is that accurate, Mackenzie? Sassy? That's the word she used, <laughs> sassy. She said Chloe is sassy in practice. I mean, yeah, she's assertive, for sure. Um, I think, How so? I think just she knows when, you know, something's not going well in practice. She knows when it's time to reel everybody in and, um, you know, kind of be that person that uh, has to, you know, be kind of harsh sometimes and it's not an easy job but I think Chloe uh, excels in that role and I think everyone has so much respect for Chloe that we know um, you know when Chloe says something like that it's important how accurate is that would you like a different adjective <laughs> uh, preferably yes but <laughs> sassy work for now um, yeah I just try to take on that leadership role and you know speak up when somebody does need to say something how much better can Yard and Garzon get? I mean, she had such a marvelous yeah. welcome yeah. to the Big Ten season, and yet she was not only young, but as you and I were talking about, she was learning the language right. throughout the entire season. Well, um, I think these guys would agree that we all have room to grow. Um, and we're pull this up a little bit, by the way. And with Yard and, you know, I think one of the things that she, she uh, had proven a year ago was uh, how efficient she can be from beyond the arc. Yeah. Uh, but um, we have to be able to take better advantage of her size. So I think one of um, the things that she's been doing this, this summer has really been working um, with her game, with her back to the basket. Okay. Um, you know, having opportunities to, to post up a little bit more, uh, to be a little bit uh, grimier inside, you know, on the low block, kind of like Grace Berger. You know, we would utilize her, uh, you know, posting up smaller guards, smaller defenders. And so... 
Um, and that's uh, she, she has room to grow just as Mac has room to grow. Chloe has room to go, grow. Um, Coach Morin has room to grow. And so, um, you know, and that's that's part of what we do is is every day just try to be a little bit better than we were the day before. Last thing before we go, I see you gesturing and I see no bandage on the hand. <laughs> when did this thing fully heal, Terry? It's still not. I mean, my oh, hand is, really? yeah, I can't, I really it looks can't close good. it. It does look good, but uh, that will always be my Grace Burger reminder, <laughs> right? So uh, anytime I look down and uh, I see that finger that won't go all the way, uh, that's my, uh, my uh, reminder to be thinking about Grace and hoping that she's doing great over in Spain. For those who forget, at the yeah. end of the season, we had a slam of the fist and the hand and was yeah. in trouble the rest of the right. way. Uh, Mackenzie, Chloe, Terry, really nice seeing you. Hope to get to see you throughout the season. Good luck this year. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> the Michigan State Spartans have a brand new look and feel. Robin Fralick is beginning her first year as the head coach. Eight players returning from last year's team, brought in some transfers, looking to get back to the NCAA tournament once again. And we're happy to bring in Dee Dee Hageman, Maura Joyner. <laughs> And the head coach, Robin Fred. But look at Dee Dee. Look at the steps from wow. Hageman. All right. I mean, she's she's a back-to-back -back All Big Ten honoree, but not as a dancer. Maybe we should change that. Uh, yeah. Who's got the best dance move on the teams, Dee Dee? Um, I have to say Gabby. She teached me my ways. She did? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely. All right, very good. Well, it's great to have you guys here. It's great to meet you in person as well. Give me an example of something you learned the last five years as a head coach when you were at Bowling Green. Something I learned as a head coach, um, I think, you know, two of the biggest things is, one, how important the relationship piece is. And then the second part is consistency, you know, being able to – create a system, a plan where you can operate consistently, you know, and I think that's really helpful for a staff and a team. What were the first conversations with your new head coach like? What, what do you remember when you first <laughs> met her, Dee Dee? What was it like? Um, actually, it was cool, for real. Um, yeah, she got on me about a couple things. In uh, the first meeting? <laughs> okay, bringing the heat. Hey, yeah, so it just showed me what kind of coach she was and how she wants the best for me. So that's why I was really rocking with Coach Frey Frey. Uh, yeah, I think the first meeting with her was definitely a good impression. I think she was pretty straightforward. Like, she had her expectations. She told us, like, you know, I'm here for this. I respect respect you la 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 you know that conversation went back and forth so that was good okay did i hear a coach frey frey yeah. coach that? frey coach frey. Frey, frey and everybody's going with that or just you didi oh uh, no we got a couple people going with it okay. not everybody yet <laughs> all right you know. I, I like the bold, nice to meet you. Here are some things yeah. I want to get on you. We had, some, we had a quick checklist we had to get through. Yeah, we had to go, yeah. Mm -hmm. but it was genuine, and it showed me what kind of coach uh, Coach Freilich really is. Well, and the cool thing is you know that you have a coach who's already bought in because of your history in the mm -hmm. state, in East Lansing, yeah. as a Spartans fan growing up, right? Yeah, I'm born and raised, and, you know, I love to, I love to share – I remember Saturday afternoons playing backyard football with my brother and our neighborhood friends and hearing the fight song. And uh, my grandma and grandpa are actually our Michigan State grads. It, it, the history in our families is, is really neat. So uh, I feel really honored to be back. Okay, so describe for me what she's like in practice. Um. <laughs> Coach, Don't worry, she's not listening, so no, you can be no, totally no, no, honest. No, no. no, Coach Fraley is really cool, calm, and collective, but, like, once we're not playing as a team, oh, you about to see Fraley. <laughs> yeah, I'd have to agree. She's very, um, keeps her calm, but she tells you what she wants you to do. Like, she's like... Here you go. And we're like, if we don't do it, then she'll get on us a little bit. Yeah. All right. What's she like off the court? What are when we're hanging out and it's not basketball related? Oh, she's fun. She's fun to be around. Mm -hmm. It's always laughs. It's always jokes going around. It's just a good time. I think with Coach, it's, you know, it's what you see, it's what you get. Yeah. So I like that kind of personality. And it's on court, off court. Maura, so. how do you describe Dee Dee as a passer? Uh, Dee Dee is definitely a facilitator. Um, you know, I can trust her to make good passes to everybody. Like, I like when we're in our flow and we're reading each other, you know, like back doors and stuff like that. Dee Dee can really see. Not. Yeah, <laughs> she can really see the floor well. What is uh, Mora like in a timeout? And a timeout, oh, she's locked in for sure. <laughs> Mo's about to go get this next bucket. Yeah, she's locked in. Yeah. 
Let me ask you about uh, a new member of the team, Lauren Ross. She mm -hmm. can score. What made mm -hmm. you want to bring her to the program? I'm really familiar with Lauren as she was at Western Michigan, so we are in the same league. And, you know, she got hurt this past season during the middle of uh, conference play. Uh, but at that time, she led the league in scoring. And we always felt like matching up with her, we had a really hard time taking that away from her. She scores in a lot of ways. She's a great shooter, uh, but she finds other ways to score as well. Give me the, the treetops, the, the headline description. How do you describe the offense and the defense that you like to run? Um, aggressive, disruptive, when in doubt, be aggressive, fast, together. Yeah. How long does it take <laughs> until you feel your system is fully implemented? I don't know if it Do you know ever, what I mean? Like, like yeah. is it something that's easy to grasp or is it like, no, we really have to work on it to get the roots deep in mm -hmm. ground? Um, it's simple, but it's not easy. Right. So it takes every day. Okay. Um, what has you all, let me go down the line, most excited for this season? You start off more. Um, well, this is my last year, fifth year. Been at Michigan State this whole time. So I think just for representing the green and white and like really giving it my all is what I'm most excited about. Mm -hmm. um, I have to say, um, I feel like we got like a new team. So just being on the court with them, um, being coached by Freilich, um, that's what I'm really excited for. Coach Frey Frey, as I call uh, yeah, it. Coach yeah, Coach Frey Frey. <laughs> what are you most excited about? I love the story of a team, and I love watching how a team can come together, and I'm excited about that. Yeah. What were your impressions of this league mm -hmm. last year and the year before as an outsider? Now you're in it, but yeah. what do you remember thinking about before you joined it? Elite. Elite. The highest level of basketball, um, incredible talent, coaches, teams, players. Um, just an amazing challenge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the Big Ten. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> You're going to have to face everybody <laughs> now. Uh, Robin, Mora, and Didi, great having you here. Have a great season. Yeah, Thank great. You. Thanks for having us. Appreciate your time. Absolutely a marvelous and incredible turnaround season last year in the first year of Shauna Green in charge of Illinois. Picked to be a top five team this year, ranked in the preseason, bringing in big name transfers and looking to make back-to-back -back tournament runs for the first time since the late 90s. We are thrilled to bring in Kendall Bostic, Makaira Cook, and Shauna Green. Uh, Kendall, let me start with you. You were here before this head coach took over the program, mm -hmm. what was most different? What felt most different last season? I would say the intensity. Um, that was really something that changed from, you know, my first year here to last year and just kind of like the philosophy of basketball. You know, all coaches have different philosophies and just I really think Shauna's philosophy is best for this program and just kind of like the defensive intensity, the principles, um, all that stuff was different adjusted. And I think last year was a big, you know, learning process for us. So I really think this year we're going to be able to like just build off of what we did last year instead of having to relearn. So. I mean, you guys went from seven wins to 22. I know you weren't there for the seven win season, but like <laughs> when during last year did you go, okay, I think this is, things are clicking here. You know, I think there's a lot of different points that, that I kind of was like, okay, maybe, you know, maybe we have something here. I think number one was our scrimmage, um, you know, early on. Uh, I think surprising all of us of how well we played. And then I think, you know, you go down to the Missouri game at Missouri to win a game like that on the road. Um, and then obviously the Iowa game, you know, January 1st to start off the new year, uh, to be able to knock off them, which, ob yeah, which obviously <laughs> we know how good they are. Um, I think it just gave us that confidence. So there was different moments throughout the season where I think we all gained confidence and all just kept believing and thinking, okay, we can really, you know, build on this and we have something here. Yeah. My, uh, let me have you all go down. I'm going to start with you, though, Makaira. Okay. Favorite part of making an NCAA tournament, whether it's Selection Sunday or getting ready that week or the travel or the atmosphere, what's the favorite part? Uh, I'd say the, my favorite part would be, like, everybody in the community is cheering you on and, like, pushing you to go. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so I guess the continued support. Um, I'd say the atmosphere. I think it's super fun. Like, you know, you grow up watching March Madness and doing the brackets for March Madness and knowing, like, finally, like, you're a part of it. You get to be in it. Like, kids are, you know, putting you in the brackets, all that stuff. So I would say that for sure. I always think that Selection Sunday is still something that no matter how many times you do it, it's just so special when you hear your name being announced. And um, so that's always uh, one of the great moments. And then it's the grind of being a coach and like the prep towards that first game. Uh, there's just nothing better than it. 
How was the team's tempo last year versus where ideally you want it to be? You know, I thought we were we were pretty good in terms of how fast we play, but I still think we can get a lot better. And I think now, you know, having a year of experience running our Phoenix transition and, um, you know, defensively, it all starts with our defense. Uh, like I say all the time, everyone says they want to run, but you got to be able to defend and then rebound in order to play that fast and free. So just continuing to, you know, to, to tighten up those things, be more disciplined um, in defensively and then obviously rebounding. Um, but I think hopefully the experience of a year – with our transition will help us play a little bit faster. Take me inside the huddle. What's she like on practices? <laughs> During practices? Yeah. Uh, I'd say definitely we have fun and we get the job done, but we just know if you're not doing what you're supposed to do, I mean, that's when fierce coach green comes in <laughs> and it's a good fierce it's like uh, okay get back focused real quick so we can go back to having fun and doing what we like to do yeah i'd say it's fun but it's very intense like we do a lot of like game situations and you know scenarios like that to prepare us for those tight situations in games so i'd say there's a really good balance of like fun intense and you know work kendall what makes makaira a good scorer her ability to finish you know and her ability to like find gaps you know as a post player you know I'm doing a lot of seals and stuff and a lot of screens and just having you know a point guard that comes off those screens tight like uses them well and will attack like when I seal for her it's great and you know just being able to find opportunities for herself to score and just kind of knowing when she has an advantage you know whenever she goes to shoot I usually don't try and rebound yeah. I just <laughs> kind of start making my way back down the court because <laughs> I know it's going in so yeah how did you improve last season Makaira to this season no, last year, like from the beginning of the season to the end, how did you feel you got better? Oh, I feel like uh, more so I was more of a leader, just like mentally. Um, I feel like half the battle usually for me is mental. So just like overcoming some things and being more like confident in myself and just, yeah, things like that. What makes Kendall such a good rebounder? Okay, so <laughs> actually... We do like a rebound challenge each year. I mean, each week. And I told her I was going to beat her this week. So <laughs> uh, I think what makes her such a good rebounder, though, is just like she's very tenacious. Like even in practice when it's like a dead play, you just see Kendall like tipping the ball around and stuff like that. And she has very good hands. You could throw her anything at any moment and she would catch it. So Thanks. Shana, let me ask you about some of the newcomers on the team. Gretchen Dolan had some eye-opening numbers in high school and I know it's high school numbers and that doesn't necessarily matter but what have you seen from her so far? I'm so impressed with how quickly she's caught on to the system you know to to defensive schemes you know offensively she just is a, a very quick learner um, Gretchen could be really really good and she's going to be really really good and she's going to be able to help us right away her ability to score I'm actually trying to tell her though I, I re remind her a lot that you've scored like a million points in high school like think as a score you know like don't overpass so in in the last two weeks since having some of these conversations I think she's really stepped up and and even looking to shoot more um, she's just she she's a great player but she's a, a great kid yeah. I mean she loves the game you can tell she's a coach's kid loves the game loves to put the work in so I'm really excited about her last thing G give me something that surprised you last year your first year in Illinois your first year in the Big Ten something that you didn't see coming you know probably just you know, I think all of our dreams and, and hopes and goals were to make an NCAA tournament. That's what you do every, you know, every year. That's what you want to accomplish. But be able to do that in year one um, was really, really special, I know, for, for our team and, and obviously our staff. Um, but it's a testament to, to these players that bought in right away, you know, it, willing to, to do the work, willing to do the hard things over and over and over um, to get us to somewhere we hadn't been in 23 years. And, and now trying to do you know I just saw that trying to get back to consecutive NCAA tournaments has been done since 98 I mean I graduated high school in 98 yeah. so that that ages me and, and also shows how long you know that is we have a lot of work to do in order to accomplish that but that's our goal that's what these guys are, are working for nonstop, and and you know that's the vision of where we want to get to good luck getting there this season really thank appreciate you. your time thank today. you so thank much you. that is Kendall McKay
Back here in Minneapolis as Media Days rolls on, turn our attention to the Northwestern Wildcats. Joe McEwen starting his 16th year as the head coach. They got a tough schedule ahead of them in non-conference play and, of course, in the Big Ten as well. But they're not only prepared for it mentally, they are prepared for it with a fit. Slightly different jerseys. Threads have dropped. It'll be a different look for Northwestern. We're glad to bring in to talk about this now. Paige Mod, who had a, a scoring explosion the last two months of last season. Kaylee Walsh, who led the team in scoring last year. And Joe McEwen. Let's start with the outfits, Kaylee. Paige, how do we feel about them, the new jerseys? I think they're sick. I, I love like them. them. <laughs> what do you like about them? Um, it's just a different. I think it's very retro. Brings us back to our roots. Yeah, I've been playing in the same uniform my two years, so I'm excited to get a new fit. I'm excited. All right, let me let me get. I, I'm not great at math, Joe, but if I have done it right, one victory this season will give you 251 wins at Northwestern, and no one in the history of the program will have more. Is my math accurate as far as you know? How could I disagree with that? That sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> How would that have sounded yeah. in 2008 if I would have said to you, "You're going to get to that point"? Yeah, you know, uh, Mike, when I took the job, obviously uh, we were. In, in really dire straits, but you know, just the players I've had, the staff to believe, and then the support from our administration, and you know, it's uh, it makes sense. It made sense when I took the job that we could be we could be great, and you know, we've we've invested a lot in in our sport, and then you know, to be able to have student athletes like Paige, Kaylee, the Veronica Burtons, and the Nia Coffees, and Maggie Lyons, and Megan McEwens, you know, we've. Just, just people that love Northwestern. I don't know about that last one, but the other ones I yeah, was with you on, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Uh, what would you guys say, I'll have each of you go down, what was the biggest challenge last year that you guys had to try to overcome? I think that just mentally we had to come together as a team a little bit more, and I think that this year we did a really great job on this offseason building our culture and creating a team that just really wants to come together and win. Um, I agree with that 100%. I think when you're losing, it's really hard to stay together and to keep the energy high and great head, positive energy. Um, but I think we've worked a lot on it. We went to Spain. We bonded a lot in Spain. Um, and we're just, you know, taking it one day at a time. Biggest challenge last year, what would you say it was? For us, I felt like um, we had to grow up. We were really good for three quarters yeah right like I, and we were in most games and we played a really tough schedule non-conference and we got the brunt of the best teams in the big 10 probably twice or on the road and you know we were in a, we were in every game we just didn't finish so i feel like that's going to carry over in a positive way um and you know if we're smart we'll take advantage of that experience kaylee you said we we've done work to kind of cement our, our culture in this offseason I want to get to Spain in a second, but outside of that, what are the things that make you feel optimistic about the bonding as a team from this past summer? Yeah, I mean, I think that any one of our teammates would do anything for each other. Coach always says great players are made May through October. So I think that we all just really came together in this off season, and I think that we're just like one big happy family now, which is really great to see. Paige, what was Spain like? Give me the memory that you're going, I can't believe I got to experience this. Oh, Spain was so much fun. I think. The most, the most fun I had was when we were making paella. We had a paella <laughs> workshop, and that was so much fun. Each of our teammates took a turn spinning the, the rice <laughs> and the chicken, um, and I learned a lot of Spanish. I speak Spanish now. Okay. She does not speak Spanish. <laughs> Wait, by the way, did we go from not at all speaking to being fluent? We went from not at actually speaking French, <laughs> not at all speaking any go. Spanish, and now I'm fluent. So. Wow, Kaylee, you are rolling your eyes very uh, hard. Over <laughs> not so much true? I'll give it to her. She got it. She what got was your it. favorite part about Spain, Joe? Uh, the Flamingo Show. That was yeah. that was an all timer. Was that that was in uh, uh, in Valencia, yep. and it was incredible. The it was a story. It was like watching a Broadway show, and the drama and the the emotion. It was it was incredible, Mike. And uh, we all, I think we all came out of there like. Oh my God! What did we just watch? Yeah. And then the three flamingo women were such incredible athletes, and it was about 110 degrees in there. I tried to get two of them to come, you know, be, be power forwards, <laughs> but it, no eligibility left, huh? But I think it was just great for just to we, we really got immersed in the Spanish culture, and our players did a great job. I thought of of you know seeing that and and wow, like this is how people live here. Yeah. Paige, I mentioned the scoring increase as the season went along. What felt different for you? What was working the last couple months of the season? Um, I think the last couple of months, I had a lot of talks with my mom. 
a lot of talks with my dad. I was talking to them more. Um, and then I just realized what my team needed from me specifically. Um, what else I could add if it was, you know, rebounding. In that case, it was scoring. Um, so I just I wanted to keep being better. So how did you see her improving throughout the year? I, I think you could see it every day, like just her attitude and practice, the the work ethic. And, you know, you come in early and you stay a little bit late and you're working on your on your skills, even though you get into February, Mike, we're not running as much or, you know, you're traveling, um, you know, you're cutting down on some of the time. She got so efficient in in the way she practiced. And I think that that was a big difference. Kaylee, when you get double teamed, which happens often, what goes through your head? Um, I think I just rely on my teammates a lot. My teammates make me look a lot better than I am. <laughs> so when I get the ball in the post and I get doubled, I have that ability to pass out. And we have some really great shooters this year that I can kick it out to and get that, get my assists up. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, in, in your time here in the league, give me the biggest way the Big Ten has changed. Yeah, I, I'll tell you, Mike, I was here, obviously, um, we added Maryland, when we added Nebraska, and when we added uh, Rutgers. And I, I think what, what you and I realized, these are three great women's basketball programs. And it made our league better. And what it did, it forced everybody to try to, you know, uh, to raise the bar to catch them. And we did. And uh, I, I think that was the big thing, to, to, to make sure you're competing with them. And um, I remember Maryland came in. And, was coming off the Final Four, and and uh, you know, it just you, you had to go play them. You had you had to you had to go after them. Um, and same thing, you know. Obviously, Coach Stringer is a great friend, and you know, she brought this mentality of Rutgers of women's basketball is the premier thing that we do. And you know, when we started beating Rutgers, or they beat it, it was the league competed against each other. It just got better. Yeah. And I think we're going to see that with the schools coming from from the West Coast. Too. I was just going to say, that, that's not done as we go to 18 next <laughs> season as well. Paige, Kaylee, and Joe, thanks for some of your time. Have a great season this year. Thank you. Thanks, I mean, don't mess with Badgers basketball. That That is, well, that's a broken video. But it was video of you guys working out. It would have been great to show that. Instead, we'll go right to the Outlook. Coach Mosley, beginning her third year as the head coach, brought in some incoming freshmen, had a nice season last year, great step forward from where they're trying to go, and they open up against Iowa. Oh, that's no big deal. Not a big deal at all. I, I hear they're all right. Here's the video. There we go. See, it's proof. They're working out. They're putting in the time. That doesn't oh, yeah. look like fun at all to me, ladies. It's fun. Yeah. We love yeah, you sold pressure. me. <laughs> that's fun. Uh, Hallie Douglas, Brooke Schrammick. And Marissa Mosley are joining us here to talk about Wisconsin basketball. Uh, let me go down the line. Give me the thing that pleased you the most about last season. Oh, um, I would say that we were playing our best basketball at the end of the season. That probably pleased me the most. I was going to say the exact same thing, but I just think how, like, we're able to build off of last year so far. Um, just we ended on a really high note, so being able to build off of that. Yeah, I was going to say just our progression through the season, and you could just see um, the confidence in everyone just build constantly through every game. Okay, so how did that happen? You all seem to agree the team got so much better as the year went on. Why? What was working? I just think the team started clicking a lot more, whether it was like on and off the court. We just kind of came together, and we saw what we could do in little bursts and moments. But I think we just finally came together. Like we, If we do this every second, we could be a really good team. So we finally came together. All right, we're already off the rails, so let's just <laughs> Come on, uh, let's do this thing. Let's talk fashion with your head coach. I mean, the specs today are what stand out, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Those yes. look excellent. She's been a new pair of specs like every practice, I feel See, like. See, I wear State Street. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for an NIL deal. Oh, you got an NIL deal. <laughs> Help her out. Describe her fashion sense for me. Okay, that's hard. Surprising, but, but like in a good way. Like I wouldn't say surprising. Like whoa. Like it's like it's like. <laughs> Thank you. It's like, <laughs> no, but like some people might take surprising in like a bad way. But like a good like. Okay, coach, pop off, slay like she ate. You know. I mean, we got some good looks here every day. It's a very different. Yeah, that's vibe. the thing. It's like you're waiting in the locker room for a game, and you're like, what's she gonna walk out in yeah, today? Yeah, we like always say like, what's her shoe? Like, what are her shoes gonna be? Like, what's the jacket? You know, I mean, you just got to keep people on their toes and you got to give the people what they want. Well, that's you the know? thing. <laughs> the folks demand it. Tell me a story about your coach, about how detail oriented she is. OK, this is probably really basic, but we do a layup drill to start every practice. 
and we just you know, it's got to be perfect passes you got to make the layup it has to be like don't bobble the ball and then we start over every single person has to make a layup it sounds simple left and right side but it just gets our practice started off with a lot of details because you can't mess up even in the slightest bit or else we start over yeah, yeah. i would say the same thing like if we're not talking if we're not counting if we're not doing every single thing that she asks us to do, start over. Like, I don't care, get on the line. If you don't want to do what she says, we're going to run. Well, see, see, that's where I was going to go next. Like, if, if I was on your team and you said something that I didn't like, I might be like, I don't know. And then I'd go, she won five national titles at UConn as an assistant. I kind of have to listen to yeah, her. She knows her. what she's talking about. Yeah, yes, she does. Exactly. I mean, you guys said it. I mean. <laughs> uh, Brooke, what's the next step for your game? Um, I think definitely working on my three-point range and adding a little bit of mid-range. I feel like I'm very inside or out. I'm kind of working on my mid-range. And also, um, within the post, I'm very left hand. I always go to my left hand, so I'm working Man, on... now everyone knows yeah. the scouting report. Uh, yeah. Everyone already knew I'm that. <laughs> everyone already knew that. Um, but definitely just working on different moves in the post and making sure that I can be as versatile as I can for this team. Uh, injury update, Hallie. How are we feeling? <laughs> when did it get to the point where you felt very comfortable with the leg? Um, so I'm still not fully, I'm really, really close to being fully back, but I'm out there doing non-contact drills and I feel really good, honestly. Um, I'm just so eager to play now that uh, once I'm cleared, I'm gonna be so ready to go. I don't even know. An so animal. I'm just so excited. <laughs> <laughs> Last question, give me a name I haven't asked you about that we're gonna be talking about as the season goes on. Someone on your Ooh. team that you're like, oh, this player, you gotta see what they do in practice. Ronnie Porter. I was gonna say Ronnie Porter or Sanaya Copeland. Ooh, I would say those two and Sarah Williams. Yeah, oh. She's, oh, yeah. I mean, she's, she's kind of okay. low hanging fruit. Right about her. I mean, <laughs> right. but I didn't bring her up. Yeah. You didn't bring we, her up. We had to talk glasses. Right, I mean, we, we there had was to. Not enough time. Like, sorry, Sarah. It's my fashion that's more important <laughs> for this season. Hallie, Brooke, and Marissa, delightful as always. Thank you, ladies. Have Thank a great you. season. Thank you. Home team in the house in Minneapolis. We are here with the Gophers as we are wrapping up our coverage of Big Ten Women's Basketball Media Days. Here's the outlook for Minnesota. Don Plitzer-White beginning her first year as the head coach. The players who played the most last year are back this year. They brought in some transfer talent, looking to make it back to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2018. Mallory Heyer, Amaya Battle, Mara Braun, and Don Plitzowite are joining me here on the set. And I know you guys went overseas this past summer. I was lucky enough to hang out with your coach last week, and she was saying it was such a great bonding experience. Let me just go down the line. In what ways did you feel it was a bonding experience? It was just amazing to be able to bond with the new teammates and new coaches, both on and off the court. We got to do a lot of different activities, and as well as play basketball overseas. So all together, amazing experience. Yeah, I mean, you're in a foreign country and all you have is your teammates and staff. So it was amazing just to go through everything we did with them together. And obviously we played our first, what, like three games there. So it was nice to play with them on the court as well. Yeah, I think the, the basketball part's always fun. But I think just being there in a different country, I think for me, being back with the team um, after traveling on my own and just being able to build that chemistry on and off the court is important. Your favorite part? Are you asking you, me? Yeah, your favorite part <laughs> of the trip. We had so much fun, the boat trip, the kayaking, oh, the, the bike trip. trip. But what I really laughed about probably the hardest is that, first of all, these ladies are amazing athletes on the basketball court, but they're, you should see them dive off the <laughs> ship and on the bouncy houses. Great, great athletes. And then when it came to the kayaking, it really wasn't that scenic of a kayak area, and they made it a competition in some way, shape, or form. They had to be okay. okay don't act like you weren't either. Well, Mallory cheated. Well, I'm I just won, saying right so. then and there. She wasn't really listening, but she did win. You were cutting. You everyone finished off. in third. We finished in second. Just saying. Because you cut us off. And you guys, there is animosity <laughs> on the ranks here. I am worried about you guys. Uh, scariest moment? Were there any like kayaking? Can sometimes it's not the most stable of things. What was the scariest moment on the trip? Kayaking was kind of scary for me. <laughs> <laughs> me and Kennedy struggled a little bit during that. Um, but other than that, everything else was really fun and yeah. enjoyable. Okay, that's good. No Ooh, scary moments. Not, we not almost good. missed our flight. We'll take it. Oh, that was, we did oh, that was very scary. We almost didn't make it home. Yeah. Why? Because yeah. our connecting flight, like, we landed oh, really close. Oh, I thought you meant, like, Mallory was late and was dragging oh, you guys out. Oh, okay. oh right away, okay. it's Mallory's fault, right? I'm just saying, yeah. no. that's the vibe was, I'm getting. No, it was really just the airlines this yeah. time. Okay, well, okay. it's easy. Nobody likes them, right? Uh, let, let me get to the basketball here. Um, describe for me how you would say 
you run an offense and the defense? Like, what will your style be here at Minnesota? Well, I think the first thing is versatility. And these young ladies have a, a great deal of versatility. You know, so I would say Mallory Hire. Mallory, people say, well, she's a she's great around the rim. She shoots it from the arc. That's really versatile. Those are two very different different skill sets. Amaya is someone who can post up as a point guard, can also get to the rim, make a lot of things happen. Mara is someone who's known a lot for her offensive ability, right? But she's and she's known to really be a great shooter, but she can also get to the rim and she's one one great defender and I think that was really fun to watch her continue to grow so versatility is probably the first thing and toughness is the next part so I want to ask you players uh, a very simple question why stay right when there's a new head coach you have the opportunity to leave but you met Dawn and chose to stay how come we love it here it's our home state um, like we said we came here for a reason and we I think we have some unfinished business and coach B's come in and she's been really good and we've been open about that and what we want to see you know from this team and with her and so we're excited to be able to get that done yeah and we'll, we talked about this before like we committed to the state we committed to Minnesota we said we wanted to improve the program so we're, we're not going to leave unless we get that done yeah, we want to finish what we started here, so we all decided to stick together and stay home. Okay, so describe the practices your head coach runs. What are they like? They're fun. Very like intense. intense. Competitive. Yes. Very Wha competitive. How intense are they? Give me an idea. Well, it's like a point system, so you want to do good so you can get points and be the winner of the day. So you're kind of always competing against each other and mm -hmm. basically anything we do. And I've already seen Coach P's forehead vein <laughs> pop out. <laughs> Like, that was when you weren't good defensively. <laughs> but yeah, it's everything's intense. Everything, you know, there's everyone's held accountable for everything we do. So it's been really good. It's been a learning experience. How do you describe your head coach's energy? Infectious. Unmatched. Yes. yes. Contagious. Contagious. Oh yeah. yeah, contagious is probably a better word. Yeah. But yeah, there's not a day where she doesn't come in just ready to go. And so it's like, all right, coach is fired up. We're fired we up. Be fired up too. Do you want to do it? I'm fired up. You fired up. We're yeah. fired up. Yeah. Is that how we start every practice? No, it's no, not. No. But that's how we start camp. So it's all right. No. All right, that's good. That's right. Uh, a fairly young team, right? A, a bunch of talented sophomores. You also have six freshmen, if I'm not mistaken, on the roster. What do you see in your incoming freshmen? Well, I see that they are, like these young ladies, are very eager to, to learn a new system, learn a new style. They want to compete at the highest level, and they're learning very, very quickly. You know, it's been really fun to watch this group watch something on film, go out and do it in a drill, not maybe have the the opportunities enough to, to see it and feel it and be automatic in it and then the next day come back have more success and then at that point in time we move on to the next thing that we have to work on but they learn very very quickly and that's been really really fun speaking of learning let me have you go down the line mallory we'll start with you what would you say is the biggest thing you learned last year from all the new things that you had to deal with in life in the big 10 on the team in college etc what's the biggest thing you learned we'll just go down the line um, I think just like how to handle adversity. I feel like I really learned that, um, how to stick together, how to lean on your friends, and yeah, get through tough times together. And I think we really did that. Yeah, I would say the same. Finding outlets away from basketball where you can spend your time and energy so then when you do come to basketball, you're fully committed to that. I would agree to that, just finding balance in your life when things aren't going right, because I know for me, basketball hasn't always been a big part of my life and something that I really take pride in. So when things aren't going right in that, how can I balance myself and just, you know, stay together and stay sane, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> if you had one thing that you're like, I just want to make sure we do this well in your first year with this program, what would it be? Compete. And they talk about it in practices. Every drill is set up to be competitive because when we learn how to do that in everything we do, even in five on zero running an offense, learning how to compete, they'll look at me like, they're on points. What are we doing? But we'll learn how to do it with great intensity. We're going to be really a, a team that is, is a challenge for, I think, anyone out there as long as we learn how to compete. And the fun thing is at the end of the year, you're in – you're at, you got the home games for this Big Ten tournament, right? Mm -hmm. Something to look forward to. Ladies, thanks so much for your time. Dawn, great to see you great again. Have you. a great season. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We are